let's see. Let's see if this is running. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> Boss is wrong in aim. Late night. Let's see if this work now. Okay, let's do this. Okay. One second. Okay, guys, welcome. Hold on. <clears throat> Impromptu discussion again. Unplanned. So good. God's timing. I couldn't sleep. Just waiting for. Her. Okay. Name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not a temptation, but those from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever and to ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> in the name of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Please, glorious Holy Spirit, strengthen my throat with perfect vigor, strength, and health. My heart, <clears throat> my arteries, my lungs, my chest. Give me strict discipline spiritually, physically, the health I need to glorify our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, by your power and the holiness that I need to delight the heart of the Father, the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ, your heart, Holy Spirit. Bless us, illuminate us, open our ears to your voice, draw out all other voices in our lives, the lives of our loved ones, my daughters. Seal my daughters, our loved ones, and us for the glory of Jesus Christ. Feed us the flesh of Jesus Christ. Give us the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Destroy fears, doubts, unbelief. Give us perfect faith in our God, hope in our God, perfect love for our God. <clears throat> Please, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat with perfect vigor and make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. And give me perfect recall of every jot, tittle portion of scripture. Destroy all error and sin in me and us to love what you love, hate what you hate, to truly love the Father, to truly love the Lord Jesus Christ, to truly love you by your strength, Holy Spirit, and prove it by obedience to scriptures and finish the race. Convict this man, open his heart, his mind to the truth, and take over the session. <clears throat> take over the channels, the blogs, own them and own us and possess us and fill us. Make us the eternal possession of the Father, of the Lord Jesus Christ and your possession. Do that for our loved ones, my daughters. Purify us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Rebuke Satan. Bless the internet connection, the outer visual qualities. Bless my neighbors with sound sleep so I don't disturb them. And have your way. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we trust in you. Glory to you, Father. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Holy Spirit. Strengthen my throat with perfect health. Rebuke the evil one to hate what you hate, love what you <clears throat> love. In Jesus' almighty name, Yehovah Rapha, Yehovah Rapha, Yehovah Rapha. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be glorified. <clears throat> Father, be glorified, Lord Jesus Christ. Be glorified, Holy Spirit. Increase in us. <clears throat> Increase in our loved ones, my daughters. May we decrease. Shine in and through us, Father. Shine in and through us, Lord Jesus. Shine in and through us, Holy Spirit. And our loved ones, my daughters, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Okay, he's a oneness, so we'll see what happens. Here, <clears throat> late night, we'll see what's going to happen. Hopefully, his sound is good. Andrew Martin, good to see you. It's been a while, buddy. Late nights, I couldn't sleep. I was trying to write, so we'll see. <clears throat> la, 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 hopefully. Remember, guys, pray for me to get healthier, holier, and glorify Jesus. I'm not young. My voice stays strong, perfectly healthy for your glory. Father, Lord Jesus, Son of God, Almighty Holy Spirit, strengthen this throat. Rebuke Satan to crush him under our feet by the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, let's see. Waiting for him to show. <clears throat> la, 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 la. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? How's everybody doing? What's up, Emmanuel? Michael, good to see you. Well, guys. I'm, I'm, I decided to start hitting weights. So you're going to see I'm getting bigger. That's not because of getting fat. I'm going to be hitting weights. Pray for strict discipline spiritually and physically to get leaner, more muscular, fit, not be vain about it, and to get holier, to truly be holy and be a doer of the word, to love the Father, love Lord Jesus Christ, love the Holy Spirit. So 
I'm starting to hit weights. I started today. So I'm going to get bigger. Pray the Lord will heal me. So it's not going to be fat, but muscle. And I have muscle memory. So it's going to show within a week or two if I keep it up. So today I did some pecs and triceps. So we'll see. We'll see. I just want to stay healthy and fit and use my health. Magnify our God and save Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but more importantly, get holier. So we'll see. By the grace of God. I want to stay, get my stomach leaner. Yeah, well, glory to God, Emmanuel. I went from 320, was around 197, around 200. I want to lean out my waist and get muscular. Yeah, I'm sure. So I'm waiting for this guy. I don't know what's going on. He's supposed to come up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the session we did today. We had 7,200 people watching. Did you know that, guys? 7,200 people. 7,200 people. You know that? About 7,200 people. And none of the Dawaganda showed up. Isn't that interesting? None of them showed up. So we'll see. So pray for me. Do a lot of cardio. I need to do cardio for my heart. So I can be healthy. Not just, I don't want to just be muscular for vanity. May God save me from that. I'm waiting for him to click. Good morning, Kitty Jason. You're up, huh? 7,000. And <clears throat> we had special guest appearances by Christian Prince and Ahmed X Muslim. It's been a bad month for Islam. This whole month, Muslims have been getting wrecked left and right. Yep. Left and right. So I'm waiting for this young man. <clears throat> he thinks he can refute the Trinity. Yeah, see that? So don't hate, Emmanuel. Don't hate. My bicep's going to stick out. Don't hate. Don't hate, man. Look at that. Look at that, man. But he's staying lean, bro. Don't hate. Okay. I don't know what's taking this guy so long. La, 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 la. I don't know where he is. I, I just sent him the link. Pray for me, brother. My love handles, man. No matter what, they don't go. I got to do something about it. Ah, body dysmorphia. Yeah, donkey, because I used to be a bodybuilder in the 90s. I haven't hit weights consistently, so I have what's called muscle memory. But mines have amnesia. So if I just start hitting weights consistently for a month, it'll stick out. But I got chicken legs, so that sucks. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know where this guy is. I'm waiting for him to come up. Okay, so I don't know. We're waiting. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't show up, I'll probably open up the Q&A, I guess. Uh, I don't know what you mean. Wait. Well, I used to be about 320. I think I got close to 340. And then by the grace of God, I lost it. But I did a lot. I see. I love to do a lot of walking cardio. And I walk outside. And because of that, I lost water weight gain. So my face looked really neat. And I liked when it looked that way. But people thought I was sickly. I don't like when I fill out because my mind tells you I'm gaining weight. You know, so that's how it is. Pray for me. I'm sick. I need healing by the flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He heals us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, physically. I hope it's not a waste of time. I don't know. Someone told me as a friend who's a modalist. So I hope it's not a waste of time. We'll see. Just to let you know what I used to look like. Pray I never get this way. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. And you'll see it in my older videos. Never, ever, ever. That's what I used to look like. See? This is me. Over 300 pounds. You see that? Angie's name never like this. May I get healthier, leaner, and holier. And love the Lord Jesus Christ more perfectly. That's more important than my physique. Never, ever, ever get this way. Never, ever, ever. Easier. Never, ever, ever. See? Never. In Jesus' name, in the mercy of the Father, of the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Never. Yep. Pray, Michael. Never like that. Okay. Well, he's here. Let's see. Okay. Are you there? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yeah, your sound is okay. So your friend contact me, I guess that's you. Your modalist oneness, what is it? Uh, if that's how you put it, I guess. Well, I don't know how you would put it. What do you believe? 
I believe that uh, there's only one God and Jesus Christ is he. That tells me nothing. Well, number one, don't come here with a sarcastic attitude. <laughs> don't laugh because that's demonic. Respect yourself for me to respect you. That tells me nothing. When you tell me Jesus is the one God, <clears throat> you're going to have to explain to me, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and you're going to have to also explain Jesus is humanity. So don't laugh because you're calling to be disrespected. Keep it respectful so we can have a conversation. Explain Father, Son, Holy Spirit, their relationship to one another, and the fact that Jesus is man. Yeah, uh, Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, these are just how God reveals himself. What does that mean? This is how God, so God revealed himself as father in creation or uh, towards creation. He's the source of all things. Malachi chapter 2, verse 9. Have yeah, we stop misquoting Malachi 2, verse 10. It's not 9. It's uh, Malachi 2, 10. So have we all not one father, have not one God created us? That means uh, nothing because you're going to have to explain what it means for him to be the father in the context of Malachi 2, 10. I've heard your passages. Don't misquote scripture. Just define what you believe so we can see how well you do defending it. So tell us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When you say Father reveals himself as a Father in creation. Yes, sir. Same New Testament also says the Father and the Son together work to create all things. So just define what you believe will go to the passages. Yeah, Son as God manifested in the flesh. That's okay. uh, 1 Timothy 3.16. No, 1 Timothy 3.16, which you're reading the King James Version, <clears throat> right? Okay. All right, and are you reading the King James Version so I can make sure because there's a very yes, great between yes, he yes. and God? Okay, first Timothy 3 16. Okay, and then the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. This is God, uh, power in creation, God's power. So He's not yeah. a person that addresses Father and Son. Uh, yeah, when you say spirit, we the spirit is God, but this is His power in creation. Yes, what does that mean, power in creation? So when the spirit comes into creation. Is he a person that can speak and be spoken to? Yes, it is God. Okay, so which person of God? Are you saying he's the Father? Yeah. Definitely. So in John 16, 12 to 13, who does he hear from? Open up your Bible. Read for me yeah. John 16, 12 to 13, or unless you want me to open up for you. You can definitely, but I'll grab that scripture likewise. Okay, so now hear what he said. The Spirit is the Father, but it's the Spirit is the Father. In creation, doing what exactly? So people, so we don't misrepresent your position? This is God's power. Okay, but you said it's the Father though, right? Yes, it is. It is. So this is the Father appearing as power? This is Yeah, this is how he works. Okay, so when he works in creation, yes. that's still him in creation appearing as a spirit? Yes, definitely. Okay, good. Because now I'm going to ask you some questions. But I still need to know about the man Christ, Jesus, what you believe, his relationship is to the Father. We'll get there. Yeah. Now, in John 16, 12 to 13, you just said this is the Father. Spirit is the Father. And he's manifesting in creation. Okay, that's his power. So here's what I'm going to read for you. Do you want me to read King James for you? Because I don't know what yeah, Bible. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I don't have a problem working with King James. Okay, so I'm using Legacy Standard Bible. Do you want that or King James? Oh, we can do it in King James. I, I'm, if No, you can read it from you know uh, where you at. And I, okay, I'll read it here. Yeah. I still have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak from himself, but whoever he hears, he will speak. Okay, you just said this is the Father, but it says he will not speak from himself. Whatever he hears, he will speak. Hear from whom? Oh yeah, this this is this is Christ. You can laugh like a demon all you want. I said, respect yourself. Who does he hear from? Yeah, who does he hear from? That's a, yeah. It says, that's, let me read it again. Yeah, go ahead. He will guide you on through. He will not speak from himself. Whatever he hears, he will speak. Who's he hearing from? Uh, he's not hearing from anyone. He's revealing. The text says he is. Yeah, that's the thing. This is because Jesus is speaking in a parable. For he spoke no, this nothing. is not a parable. This is it, not this is a historical narrative. He's talking to the disciples. Yeah. So I'll ask you the question again. So Who ask, does he hear from? That's what I just explained to you. He's not hearing from anyone because Jesus spoke no the words. Does he does hear? It's in front of you. I he will not speak from himself, 
but whatever he hears, he will speak. So does he speak? Yes, the spirit does okay, so speak. You just buried yourself. If he speaks, then he hears. So deal with the text. Don't twist it. Yeah, he doesn't hear from anyone. He reveals. It just says he does hear. Hear from who? That's the scripture. That's what I'm asking you. Who? And that's what I'm. And that's what I'm telling you. Christ is speaking answer. as a parable. That's the exactly text is not a parable. This is historical narrative where he's speaking to the disciples, and it's not a parable. So when he says he speaks, that's a parable. Yes, my brother, because he told. Okay, let's him. try it again. Does he actually speak, or is that's a parable? He's speaking. Okay, so now stop your game. If he's speaking, and that's it literal, to, not a parable, yeah, who does he hear from? He needs It needs to be interpreted. He's not hearing from anyone. It, okay, I'm going to give you the fourth time I'm going to send you to your vomit. It says he speaks, which you say it's literal. Then it says he hears. Now, who does he hear from? He doesn't hear from anyone. And you and I both Can, I, can you get out of here get lost? You're a waste of time. Can you get lost? Because I'm going to give you another chance to answer the uh, question. It's in front of your face. He hears, just like you said, his speaking is literal. His hearing is literal. So I'm going to ask you again, who does he hear from? And I just answered you. Okay, now get the hell out of here. You're a bastard, son of Satan. Get the hell out of here. All right. See, it doesn't last with these guys, does it? See, it's a waste of time. Okay, guys, so maybe we'll make the most of it. I'll open up, I guess, to Q&A maybe. Should I do that? See that? So you see how quick the, it was? A waste of time? It's a parable. The guys tell me it's a parable. So speaking is literal. It's not a parable. But hearing is a parable. See how easy it is to destroy modalism? See how easy it is to destroy modalism? Now, I can continue or I can end it. No, because they're a joke. They don't believe scripture. So the speaking part was literal. You caught it, right? But the hearing is a parable. And it's not a parable. It's historical narrative. It's narrating what Jesus is telling the disciples will happen when the Spirit comes to them. That's simple as that. All right. So, you guys want me to open up Q and A? It's up to you. Yeah. This is what happens when you deny the true God, according to the Revelation. If you deny what the Bible says that God is triune and He is, you're going to end up twisting Scripture, butchering Scripture, and humiliating it yourself. So, guys, let me know what you want me to do. Do you want me to do Q&A? Because then I'll share the link. Q&A. You guys interested? Let me know because for a late night, we still have a good crowd. I don't know. I can try to go to sleep or I can do Q&A. All right, let's do Q&A. All right, let's hear it. Here it is. Here it is now right here. Right here. Stream yard. Like now, I'm gonna have to let people know we're doing Q and A now. Oh, what a waste of time! These guys that think they can interpret scripture, and they come here and and I told them, I hope you're not gonna be a waste of my time. I hope you're not gonna be a waste of my time. Let me do something. All right, let me do this. All right. So let's see if it's a waste of time. Let's see if anyone's going to manifest. Let's see. What happened with you, Christian Samano? You're kind of scary looking person. What do you need, mister? Oh, nothing, man. I'm just a big fan. I'm just uh, oh, glad to see fan, you, man. man. Uh, you just be air-conditioned, not a fan. No, nah, um, um, I grew up as a Christian, and um, obviously, and um, I had a Muslim aunt, and she raised me for the majority of my life. You had a so I was always conflicted in um finding the you truth. Had a what? I was always uh conflicted in finding the truth. You're not, you're not hearing me. Me. You're talking, you're not even hearing. You had a what, Muslim? A Muslim aunt. Muslim who? A Muslim aunt. She raised uh, me for most of my life, so I was really Muslim like, aunt? Aunt. You know, my auntie. Okay, because I didn't hear you. So like Muslim aunt. I didn't okay. So you had a Muslim aunt. How was she your aunt? And she's Muslim. I mean, do you have Muslims on your family? Yeah. I, majority of my mom's side was Muslim, but my mom was Christian. So I guess I got lucky uh, having her as my mom. And so I was always conflicted because she told me Allah was a way, the truth, and the life. And I, Allah well, was I, what? I always felt in my heart, Jesus was the way, the truth, and the light. And so... She told you Allah's what? She told me Allah's God and stuff like that. No but way. I, I never, like, agreed with her and stuff. 
Like we always had like a discrepancy because like I just felt it wasn't right. And so like I was wondering like if you had any versus like versus help me better refute them instead of like using just Matthew twenty six through verse thirty nine, where they go Jesus prays like a Muslim. To refute and I go, no, he doesn't. He's praying to the Father right there. I also learned that from you. Okay, yeah, but buddy, I have thousands of videos how to witness to Muslims. Start watching them, learning them, apply them. I got you. And by the way, you're shirtless. I don't want to see your uh, beardless chest. Sorry. And you know, you know, you're not going to get married this way. A woman sees you, she's not going to say, "Oh, he's sexy." If you want to get married, put on a shirt. Well, apologies. All right, okay, but yeah, keep watching my sessions. Learn the arguments and just share them. There's too many. There's not one, but you're doing good. But remember, though, if you want to get married, you don't flash your beardless Sorry. chest. All right, brother. You're a good man. I don't care what your aunt says about you. You're a good man, brother. Thank you, man. God bless you, buddy. God bless you. All right. What do Hello. you mean, uh, So I have a question. Have you, you heard of... Take it easy. You're speaking oh. too loud. You're shouting. Oh, Get sorry. I Talk, come down. Take it easy. First, we got to know you. Who are? What's your background? Um. So I, I'm like an Icelandic uh, teenager, and like I'm in, like I was baptized uh, in the Serbian Orthodox Church like okay. five months ago. Okay. And like I wanted to talk about some uh, migration theories. Uh, I'm not interested in your migration theories. If it's the, about the Bible, what do you have anything about Bible Islam or something? Oh, um, I have a question. Um, what since like the the book of Maccabees is my favorite book in the Bible, the first You're one. You're kidding me. What? You're kidding me. Wait. Uh, okay, Maccabees is your favorite book. Okay, so yeah, what's the questions about it? My question is about um, uh, <laughs> um, my question is about. Why why that book is so obscure and like uh, there's there's so little about it and mm -hmm. like uh, it, it's very important to the Christian faith actually. Obscure to who? How is uh, it obscure when Catholics and Orthodox all believe it's scripture and read it? So I, obscure I, to who? Uh, us Nordics. I don't know. I don't live there. You should maybe go ask them. Why is it obscure? But I don't know what kind of, what's the predominant denomination in in Iceland? Uh, it's new Lutheranism. That's probably why, because Lutherans follow Martin Luther. And Martin Luther, although included these books in his German translation of the Bible, he did not believe they were canonical, meaning inspired scripture. They were just yeah. to be read. So that's why. It's obscure because the Lutherans, let me give you a little history. Mm. When Martin Luther translated the Bible into the German tongue, okay, German tongue, uh, he initially included these books, but prefaced it by saying these are not scripture. But in the 19th century, 1800s, Protestants stopped including these books in their Bibles. And so up until the 19th century, 1830s, even Protestant Bibles had these books. But from the 1830s, 19th century onwards, onward, they were no longer included. That's why now they're obscure. Ah, ah. Um, also, uh, also, this kind of, there are many Protestants who ask what happened after. Uh, what's the last book in the Protestant Bible again? Uh, Revelation? No, no, no. Um, Old Testament. I mean Old Testament. Uh, Malachi? Malachi. After Malachi, that would be Maccabees, right? Well, uh, yes, Matthew, but it's not plural. Matthews, unless you want more than one Matthew. What about it? No, I'm I'm saying after after Malachi, the explanation to what comes after Malachi that would be Maccabees, wouldn't it be? After what is Maccabees? No, after Malachi, in in the in the in the, in the timeline, there is Maccabees, right? After because, Malachi, yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Malachi is before Maccabees because Maccabees deals with the Maccabean revolt that took place second century BC around 167 BC, 167 years before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So but what about right. it? Uh so a lot of Protestant scholars and all that they say like that there's a mystery what happened between the no. Malachi and Matthew, but no. the mystery is solved with no they don't like, say that. No. Wait, they don't say that? 
no, they say that we have these books that give us historical background to what took place between Malachi and Matthew, but they're not inspired scripture. Oh, huh. um, also, also I have four questions, uh, two more questions. No, okay. One more question for two books, um, right. fourth Ezra and fourth Maccabees. Yep. What, what is the deal with them? I uh, couldn't tell you what the deal with them is, but because for Ezra, it's most likely what's called a pseudepigrapha, pseudepigraphal wow. writing, meaning it's attributed to Ezra, but he didn't write it just like Enoch. And because Ezra did not write for Ezra, so there is some question about its canonicity. That would be my assumption. For Maccabees, well, I I need to just confirm for to the Orthodox. The, the Orthodox, I know you have first and second Maccabees. Do you also accept four Maccabees? Because there are <clears throat> translations of the Greek versions of the Old Testament called the Septuagint, where they actually do include for Maccabees, but that doesn't mean it's canonical. Because I, oh, heard yeah. I also heard that for Maccabees is included in the Georgian Bible and like oh, yeah. in, in the Russian tradition, for okay. Ezra is like used for the archangel yeah. uriel or i don't know right here right here let me find it here here is aleppo this is a website where they have the english translation the greek versions so i'm going to send in private chat and for everyone else here and so here you'll see that they have books oh this guy's got a bruce lee shirt danny similar to what i have uh here you'll see that they include books other than the seven that's accepted across the board by Catholics and Orthodox and the Syrian Church. Here, four Maccabees is right here. You see it, an appendix? Yeah. See it right there? So yeah. there's first Maccabees, second Maccabees, third Maccabees, and four Maccabees. So now I'm aware, like our brother said, who's Armenian Orthodox, that you'll find in Orthodox Bibles, third Maccabees. So I didn't want to speak off the cuff whether they have four Maccabees, but it's here translated in this particular version of the Septuagint. Septuagint meaning translation of 70. Translating mm -hmm. English, it's included here. All right. So but what about these books anyway? Uh, they're, they're like disputed among many bishops and stuff. Yep. Like exactly. like Russians and Georgians alike. They're like, they're in, jo so like Fourth Maccabees is in Georgian Bibles and Fourth Ezra is actually in some Russian Bibles. Sure. But I don't know much about it. It's very yeah. obscure. Yeah, it's too obscure. So all I can tell you, read them, see what you can get from them. But one thing that is certain, across the board, Protestants, Catholic, and Orthodox, whether Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, we all accept 66 books. Mm -hmm. 66 books. Now, the Orthodox and the Catholic, and I'm including the Assyrian Church, all accept 73 books. So if you look at all the major branches of Christianity, include Protestantism, they all agree on 66 books. Right. The Protestants have the same 39 Old Testament books that is accepted by the Catholics and the Orthodox Assyrian Church as part of the Old Testament canon. So we all accept in common 39 Old Testament books and 27 mm -hmm. books of the New Testament. Now, the Assyrian Church, because the translation of the New Testament books was later in the history of the Syrian church. They accept 22 books of the New Testament because by the time the books reached the Assyrian church, which today is called Nestorians, right. some of these books were disputed because they could not verify whether these books were written by the men that the books claim to have been written by. So five of the books were questionable. So they accepted 22. Now, however, now the modern Assyrian church is now <clears throat> trying to move towards accepting even those five books that are in dispute in order to come in line with mainstream Christianity. But if we put that aside, Assyrian church, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, all except 39 Old Testament books. We what all about, agree, meaning what about, what about the Ethiopian one? They all accept 
39 Old Testament books in common. I mean, they were all agreed on that. Hmm. Now, if you put the Assyrian church aside, all of them except 27 books of the New Testament. The Assyrian church, historically, accepted only 22, but now they're moving towards accepting even those five books because they want to come in line with mainstream Christianity. Now, if you put Protestantism aside, hmm. Orthodox, whether Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, and I'm including the Ethiopian Orthodox, hmm. Catholic Church, Syrian Church, they all accept 46 Old Testament books, meaning not only 39, which the Protestants hold, but the seven books that you'll find in Catholic Bibles, accepted by the Orthodox and the Assyrian Church. 46 Old Testament books. So they will accept 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Letter of Jeremiah, Baruch, Tobit, right? Mm. Mm, Bell and the Dragon, Susanna. Mm. All right. So in that agreement, in that regard, we have a lot more agreement than disagreement. So if we go beyond the 46 Old Testament books, now you have particular churches that will include, let's say, Enoch, 3rd Maccabees, 4th Maccabees. But if you ignore the fact that some of these denominations include these books and focus on what they have in common, Catholic Church, Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Assyrian Church, all accept 46 Old Testament books. They all accept 1st and 2nd Maccabees. They'll all accept the letter of Jeremiah. They'll all accept Tobit and Judith. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more commonality than disagreement. You with me there? Yeah, I understand. I just, so I just have to. Focusing on those particular denominations that may have a few extra books, the rest don't. And then you overlook the fact that they have more in common, more in agreement regarding the canon than disagreement. Mm. Right, right, right. So focus on the commonality where they all accept. So even with Protestants, they accept the same 39 Old Testament books Catholics accept that Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Syrian Church accept. When it comes to the New Testament, Protestants, Catholic, Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox all accept 27 books of the New Testament. Historically, the Assyrian Church, 22. However, now... They are now moving towards accepting all 27 books because they want to align themselves and come in agreement with mainstream Christianity. The difference would be with those few, you know, like the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, that have more books, but not all of them are canonical. This is the thing. If you ask any scholar of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, hmm. they have books like Clement of Rome or, let's say, the Didascalia, which is based on the Didache, but it's later, that they'll tell you that this is not on the same level, it's not on the same level of authority as those other books, but they are also included because it is for the edification of the church that they are read, but they're not given full canonical status. So it's a little Wait, Wait so, they'll, so they're, they kind of have the status of the Philokalia in a way? The who? The Philokalia, it's, yes, it's a long, the, yeah, yeah. yes, the Orthodox, exactly. You got right. it. So yeah. that's why you got to be careful. Even at the if the Open Orthodox Church, they have eighty-one books. There's one particular edition of the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible that, from last I saw, had eighty-three books. But if you ask them, yeah, these extra books are helpful reading, edifying reading. They're edifying material to be read, but they don't have the canonical status of these other books. Right. Right. I also so it's heard a little tricky. It's a little tricky and it's a lot more complex. So don't look at the disagreements. Look at the commonality. So right. the open Orthodox, if I say these 73 books of the Catholic Bible, do you accept them? Yes. Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, these 73 books of the Catholic Bible, you accept them? Yes. And if I ask the Protestant, the 39 Old Testament books accepted by the Catholics. Do you agree? Yes. It's a seven books that they question. Then if I ask the Protestant, do you accept the 27 books of the New Testament accepted by the Catholics, the Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox? Yes. Mm -hmm. So focus on the agreement, not on the disagreement. 
Right, right, right. So, um, I, I also want to, I have one last question. Please go ahead. Um, how was the, the, the schismatic Ukrainian church formed? Well, let me call the Ukrainian patriarch and ask. You're asking me <laughs> about situations that are taking place in Ukraine. And by the way, I was told Ukraine is trying to shut down the Orthodox Church. But have you seen the zeal of the Orthodox Christians? I was watching some posts. Huh. I just watched a couple of days ago that the Orthodox Christians are marching out in the streets of Ukraine and going there and glorifying the Trinity, glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ and praying and praising in spite of the government trying to stop the Orthodox Church and shut it down. You guys aware of this? I was just watching this the other day. I was oh, watching God. it on some posts. You guys know this or no? I, I've never heard of this. Yes, if you go right now, because I just read it several days ago, the Ukraine government was trying to shut down the Orthodox Church, and the Orthodox Church marched in the streets in protest saying, we're going nowhere. Right. right. See, um, that's the zeal of those filled with the Spirit. That's when you defy the government. When the government tries to get you to break God's law and the Son of the Lord, you say, the hell with your law. We submit to Jesus, no matter what the consequences. So because they did that, they tried making their own church and say, no, this is the real Ukrainian church. I don't know if it's it's just, I think, to spite the Orthodox, they want to shut it down. But it's not working. Oh, so, but, it's yeah, also... you know what's going on in Ukraine. Why don't, I, why don't you book me a first-class ticket? I'll go to Ukraine and ask. How am I going to know what's going to happen in Ukraine, brother? I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I'm here. Stuck for uh, the uh, Allah. Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Norway. Okay, so why don't you take a flight, go to Ukraine and ask? Um, I don't know how much it would cost, actually. Don't worry about it. Walk by faith, not by sight. You'll be all right. So um, I should walk all the way to Lapland? Like Amen. Walk? Do it. Walk by faith. Yes, you can do it. If you believe, you can move mountains. Oh, you have a little faith. All right. If that's your question, the other people are waiting. They're cussing you out. They're waiting. All right. I understand. I understand. I understand. I'm done here. All right, buddy. God bless you. All right. God bless all right, let's see, Spider. Even his name is interesting, Spider. Hey, Danny, you keep, keep waving your hand, thinking you had a Bruce Lee shirt. I'm going to bring you up, and somehow that's going to make me want to get you up closer. Danny, show your ugly face or you're out of here. What's up, uh, Isaac? Isaac, what's up? Isaac, before the rapture, buddy. Can you hear me? You. Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, what's up? Yeah, hello, man. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, well, yeah, so, you're just seeing me on screen. Meet me is like face to face, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, my question is about Mary. Um, uh, right now, at the moment, I'm not sure whether I should be a Protestant or a Catholic or Orthodox. So I've been really thinking about it, and I really want to ask you, like Catholics. I know that they don't worship Mary in any way, well, and neither do they to the saints. The process, but... they worship Mary. Uh, I'm not a Protestant. I'm just, no, just a follower Christ. of Christ. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so why do Catholics and Orthodox like they pray for intercession? I think it's called. Um, they uh, pray to the saints they, like pray for God for seek, them. Why shouldn't they seek the intercession of the saints who are glorified? Um, why shouldn't they just pray? themselves to God directly why should they so why do you ask people to pray for you on earth why don't you go to God directly um, that's true exactly so why shouldn't they ask the saints in heaven to pray for them um, I don't know I just felt like it's it's weird I mean it's very I, weird. Really, I, I mean well, I remember if you ask someone on earth to pray for you you're not going to God directly so you just said go to God directly. So why aren't you going to God directly? Why ask anyone on earth? Didn't you just say that? Why not pray to God directly? Why ask them to pray for you? Same reason why you would ask a Christian on earth whom you believe is close to the Lord to pray for you. So now you're going to that person to pray for you instead of going to God directly. Now, if you say, well, he's alive. Well, who told you they're dead? Jesus says they're alive. I've been through this millions of times, but that's my point. If you're consistent and you never ask anyone to pray for you and you just ask God, then it's okay, you're consistent. You don't ask anyone on earth or in heaven to pray for you. You just go to God. That's that's fine. You're, you're free to do that. But the moment you ask others on earth to pray for you, that means you're seeing the concept. What's the concept? Just like Jesus says, pray for one another, and you can ask people to pray for you, the understanding of the Catholic and the Orthodox, which is based on the 
understanding of the ancient church. They didn't make it up. Christians have been doing this from time immemorial. Is that they're alive in heaven. They're perfected. They're not dead. They are sinless. And their love is perfect. And the spirit makes them aware of the plight of Christians on earth. And just like if I ask you to pray, when I say, blessed mother, pray for me. The spirit makes her aware that I'm seeking her prayers for me. And she prays, just like if I say, brother, pray for me. That's that's the concept. That's all it is. That's all it is. All right. I understand. You see my point? Um, and I've done sessions yeah. on this. Veneration of the Saints on my playlist. That's all it is. So when they say, yeah. well, you should pray to God, not to Mary. I say, well, number one, how do you define prayer? See, this is the debate. Some have a narrow definition of prayer. They think prayer only means worship. No. I've done sessions, even with Kelly Powerless. Who kept manifesting talking over me he got nailed on this i showed that the very terms that the bible uses for prayer are the very terms used in other contexts where you have people asking others right for something without this being worship so the term prayer is where people get hung up on prayer isn't always worship prayer can also mean invocation asking requesting so, yeah, there's a form of prayer where it's worshiping, but then there's a form of prayer where you're asking and invoking. I understand. Um, so that's I would also like to ask you um, about Mary. Um, okay. Why is Mary, like, so important to the Catholics and the Orthodox, Orthodox? compared to the Protestants who basically oh, don't care about Mary that much? No, no, no. Yeah, it, it depends on which Protestants. If you're talking about the Reformers, Martin Luther, John Calvin, their view of Mary is much different from modern Protestants who are not only ignorant of the early church, but what the Reformers taught. Uh, and I've gone through sessions. Yeah, when you say why, well, I'm going to let you answer the question. The Lord Jesus, in his love, became flesh and blood to be one of us, united to us, but also to die a human death, right? In other words, Jesus is spirit, as God, he's spirit. But he came into the world in order to die a human death to set you free from death, right? Yes, absolutely. Where did he get his flesh from? Um, I mean, from Mary. Where did he get his blood from? From Mary as well. So you see, understand the importance to those who look at God setting apart this holy virgin, creating her and choosing her to give to Jesus his flesh, his blood, his chromosome DNA, in order for him to become flesh, become human, because through his human nature, he offers his life as a sacrifice for our sins on the cross, a life, a body of flesh, blood, bones, chromosomes, you name it, that came from her by the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. And it's not just we who honor her. What do we do with Luke 1, 41 to 45, where it says, Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit and John the Baptist filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if you read Luke 1, 15 to 17, specifically Luke 1, 15, and Luke 1, 41, 45, it says, John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in his mother's womb. Elizabeth filled the Holy Spirit when Mary walked in. She shouted, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And he goes, and what honor is this, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And then she says, for the child in my womb leaped for joy at the sound of your voice. So an unborn child, six months old, recognized the voice of Mary, was leaping with excitement and joy, hearing the voice of Mary. And Elizabeth was ecstatic and full of joy and broke out in praise, saying, an honor is given to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. And she did that, and John did that, by the Holy Spirit filling them to do that. So if the Holy Spirit filled, filled Elizabeth and filled John in the womb to be elated and ecstatic, ecstatic and full of joy at the presence of Mary, because she was now carrying Jesus in her womb, that Elizabeth says, the mother of my Lord, then what do you think a sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit is? 
to ignore her and not see her importance or to honor her and respect her and praise her for the role given to her by Christ. Okay, I understand. Okay, there you get your answer, man. Luke 1, 41, 45, it's there. Yeah. And, um, and then what did Mary I'll say? Six to 56, when she broke out of prayer, she goes, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. She says it. Luke 1, 46 to 56. All generations will call me blessed. Now, who calls her blessed? Which traditions? Which churches call her blessed? Which traditions, which churches acknowledge her, honor her, love her, and respect Sorry. her? Sorry, uh, your voice cut off for a second. Could you repeat no, what you said? Yourself. Which traditions, which churches honor her, respect her, cherish her, and love her? Because she goes, from now on, all generations call me blessed. Which traditions? Um, all of them. You sure? When's the last time you hear in Protestant churches even a mention of Mary? Uh, no, uh, no, just the Catholics, I believe. Not only Catholics, the Orthodox. So what, the Orthodox, right? Yeah. So who's fulfilling that scripture? The Protestants who uh, are like an afterthought, and it seems almost they go out of their way not to mention Mary? No, they don't. Okay, so there you go. There's your answer. Hope that All right. Answer. Um, I'll look into that a bit further. Right. Um, I also have one more question, uh, if you have time. Um, and it's about baptism. So um, a Christian, do they have to be baptized to enter the kingdom of heaven? Uh, I had a discussion about this with my father, and we came to a little um, disagreement about that. Okay. So, But your father is not a bishop. He's not a patriarch. He's not a deacon. He's not a cardinal. He's not a pope. He's not an apostle. He's not a prophet. He can disagree with you, but what? by what authority? What gives him the authority to tell you it's wrong or right? Mm. Right? Because if I want yeah. to understand the role of baptism in salvation, I look to the scriptures and the church that was entrusted with those scriptures by the Spirit to tell me the interpretation of those passages. So historically... There's no doubt about this. Historically, there's one teaching that was unanimous all over the world by every Christian, even heretics, that the Holy Spirit used water baptism to regenerate you, to make you spiritually alive and unite you to Christ. No one denied this. Even Martin Luther affirmed it. It's not until you come to the Reformation over 1,500 years later where you're going to have some people disagreeing. And even in Protestantism, even in Protestant, Maimuna, if you start barking like Muhammad, I'm going to bring my cat to piss on your crown. So shut your pie hole, Maimun. You are a monkey, son of a Shia prostitute. So shut the hell up and get the ladder, you stupid bastard. Tell him to hurry up. Anyway, coming back to you, some guy was manifesting like Muhammad. He was foaming at the mouth like Muhammad. Uh, it's right. Okay, now, so you understand. Even heretics agreed with the true believers, and even Martin Luther taught water baptismal regeneration. And even today in Protestantism, you have Church of Christ that teach water baptismal regeneration, that it's in the act of water that the Spirit makes you alive, unites you to Christ. Lutherans believe that. Episcopalians believe that. So this is a debate not among the ancient churches. Orthodox, Catholic, Assyrian Church all agree. The early church, 1st century writings, 2nd century, 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century, unanimously, universally all agree. No one dissented. Even Martin Luther accepted it. So who are these people who come centuries later telling us, no, that's not what it means, and no, baptism doesn't regenerate? By what authority? Who gave them that authority? By what authority? No. And here, let me get you the article. Let me show you. I wrote an article on this. Let me go there. Yeah, so... It's, it's a problem in Protestant. It's never been a problem in the ancient churches. Never. Historically, you have first century writings like the Epistle of Barnabas, second century writings, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, third century, fourth century, unbroken chain from true Christians, Orthodox believers, who are disciples of the apostles, pointed by the apostles and their disciples. They all taught water baptism is used by the Spirit to make you alive, unite you with Christ, and Forgive me. It's even in the Nicene Creed. 
where it says, I believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Mm. It's universal teaching. So some guy comes today and says, well, no, John 3, 5 doesn't mean water baptism. Who told you? Oh, because the context. What context? These people have been reading context long before you existed, and they say you're wrong. So if you're telling me those who knew the apostles, trained by them, appointed by them in the power of the Holy Spirit, used by the Spirit to preserve the scriptures, which you're now using against them, and to defend the true faith and die for it, they say water baptism is used by the Spirit to make you alive, unite you to Christ, and bring forgiveness of sins. Who are you to then say they're wrong? Who are you? Yeah. A nobody. Now, I'm not saying you, you, right? But here's the article. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. It's universal, buddy. It's the universal teaching of the church. Here it is. I'm going to send it to you in private chat. Right there. You see it? Yeah. For the rest of you, it's right here. So I was of the school that water baptism does not regenerate because I was what they call a credo baptist. So I was duped and deceived into thinking water baptism is a symbol because I didn't know church history. I didn't know about the disciples of the apostles, their writings. I didn't know about the bishops that the Holy Spirit appointed through the apostles laying hands on them and saying, you will now take over where we left off. We're going to go to heaven. You're going to take over and continue. I didn't know their teaching. But you know what happened when I got confronted with their teaching? It started messing me up. I started having problems. I'm like, uh-oh, because these were not heretics. J Justin Martyr is not a heretic. Irenaeus is not a heretic. Irenaeus is the disciple of Polycarp, bishop of Smyrna, who died as a holy martyr at the age of 86. He was a disciple of the apostles, learned from the apostles, directly word of mouth, eyewitness, taught by John. And Irenaeus says, John 3, 5, water and baptism, water and spirit, that water is water baptism. It's right there, documented. It's right there on the screen. Mm -hmm. If they got it wrong, no one got it right. So I hope yeah, that... I understand. That, yeah, yeah, it did definitely clear up some things. So um, I'm going to rewatch this later. Okay, well, um, but article, thank right? you, Sam. Um, I'm going Please. to let uh, someone else come up and ask you a few but questions. But make sure you get the article and read it. It's documented. Here, I'll yeah, give you no, oh. We have the epistle attributed to Barnabas. This is first century, written around 70 AD. And in it, here it is, right here, epistle of Barnabas, right here on the screen. This is first century, buddy, chapter 11. Baptism and the cross prefigured in the Old Testament. Now, first century, and some will date around 70 AD, attributed to Barnabas, but most likely not written by him. Look what he says about water baptism. You ready? Yeah. Right here. This means that we indeed descend into the water full of sins and defilement, but come up bearing fruit in our heart, having the fear of God and trust in Jesus and our spirit. So you go down in water, sinner, you come up alive. And that's Epistle Barnabas, Clement of Rome, and Shepherd of Hermes, and on and on it goes. Unbroken chain, brother. Mm. Right? Yeah, I understand. Danny. Danny, you want me to get you out of here, right? For telling me and telling him how much time we have, Danny? Here, Danny, let me send you. Uh, Danny, uh, they're waiting for you in Iran. The Shia brothel? Get the lot here, Danny. Sorry. So, all right. Um, anyways, um, I, I have to go, but uh, okay, thank well, you. Make sure Sam, you get a lot um, of beauty sleep, all right? I will. Yeah, I will. Uh, God bless you and your daughters and your family, Sam. You, you have really been helping a lot of people and you've I'm been okay. leading me to Christ. So, Hallelujah. Thank May you. the Spirit work through me. Everything good is from the Holy Spirit. Everything bad is from Kiri Leison and Full Armor Apologetics. God bless you, brother. Absolutely. Take care, man. All right. When I throw you out, it's to make more room. Uh, what do you need, Ray J? Well, no, bro, Ray J, no, what do you need? No. You hear me good, bro. Yeah, even your name's scaring me, Ray J, because Ray J is not a good name. You know why, right? Yeah, I agree with you, man. Huh? Why is it I not? I agree a with you. <laughs> not very good history. Of it. Hold on, let me uh, let me leave you that message. I'm live right now, but what is this that you sent me? Go ahead. So, what's your question? Okay. So first off, I want to say. Man, this year has been a breeze, man. It's has been a breeze? Yeah. Why? We've been going crazy. I've been watching you this this year. I started watching you. And okay. man, I learned so much. 
Glory to God. Everything good is from the Holy Spirit. We give him the glory. May he keep us humble and crucify our flesh. So what's your question, friend? Okay, my, my question is, so <clears throat> I wonder if in the Quran, the same word in the first Samuel. For Samuel? Uh, yeah. Okay. Is it is it in the Quran as well? Okay, what about for Samuel? I don't know what you're talking about. You just said for Samuel and Quran. Okay, <laughs> help me out, man. I don't <laughs> yeah, read hearts. So... Hold on. Let me read your heart. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay, this is what you just said. Like, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> I I need to lose weight. I, I'm lacking beauty sleep, and I'm just here yeah. to get attention because I love Sam and I want to burn candles to his picture. Okay, so now that I read your heart, what about for Samuel and the Quran? <laughs> okay, so. I don't know. I, I think I heard you talking about that the Quran affirms the same war. So I wonder... The Quran affirms the same the word? War, war. Oh, okay. Yeah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 246, 252, it confirms the story in Samuel, but Allah sending out Saul, which the Quran calls Talut, to fight the wars of Allah, and to fight Jalut Goliath and David killing Goliath. Yes. It's Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2 of the Quran, ayat 246 to 252. I wrote an article on it. I can give it to you. So what about it? You want the article? Yeah, right. I've been searching for the article. I can't oh, find right. nothing. Why don't you just say that? Get stuck for Allah, homie. Let yeah. me show you how you do it next time. But you didn't know the verses anyway, so you couldn't have done it. So if you go to my article here, you would have to put in Surah S period, 246 to 252. And here it is. But you wouldn't know that. So here's the article. You ready? He's talking about where in the Quran, as well as the sound hadith, do you find Muhammad confirming the wars of Joshua and Canaan and the wars carried out by Saul, such as 1 Samuel 15, which the Muslims try to use to attack the God of Scripture. Well, here's the article. I'm going to send it to you in the private chat. And Thank that's you. for you right there. And guys, here it is for you. There it is right there. Don't let them get away with it. This is what I used to bury Daniel Hakikachu and Ijaz Ahmed in the debate. Remember that? Yeah. All right. So did that help you? Okay. Yeah. Did that help you? Help, but I have not... Yeah, of course. Of course. Okay, so you got that. Maybe okay. So I... what's the other question? Okay. So I had a, I had a chat with a friend. You and friends? he told me. Uh, yeah. You have friends? Yeah. And, man, we're living in a desperate world that someone would be your friend. But good. Yes, you got diary. Okay. So he told me that, uh, what's it called? Luke. You know, uh, in Luke, when it's talking about the emperor who sent out all yeah, the. Yeah, uh, Serentus Quirinius. Alejandro, we don't say LMAO, brother. We don't say LMAO Alejandro, stuck for Allah. We say LMBO. Yeah, what about it? Right. So he sent out all the uh, send out all the soldiers to analyze, like, kill all the children, right? That's so not Luke. Wonder... That's Matthew chapter 2. That's Matthew. Herod. Right. So I wonder, do I have another document of that? What, what document need? What is he saying? Uh, anything else but the Bible. What? Like any document. Except no, I don't know what you're asking me because what about the slaughtering of the innocents? No, not the in innocents. The child when uh, Jesus was about to be born. Okay, let me try this again. That's called the slaughtering of the innocents. What about it? Uh -huh. Yeah, I wonder. Two years and up a... younger. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So what about it? Can Can I prove it outside the Bible? Why would you need to prove it outside the Bible? Because you're assuming the Bible is not a historical record that gives you accurate history. Why would you assume that? I don't. Uh, yeah, but why I would your friend it. assume it? Your friend is saying it didn't happen. Say, yes, it did, because Matthew is an historical source. You're treating it simply as an inspired text. No, you can reject that it's inspired and still view it as a source of history of, for events of the first century. So, So what are you talking about? Why would I question Matthew? What reason have you given me to deny the historicity of this story in Matthew? See, you're, again, I don't want to get upset. I understand you're learning. 
why are you needing to prove that what the Bible says is true by appealing to outside sources? Because that means these outside sources are more reliable than the Bible when the Bible itself is a collection of books that are recording history. And as yet, there hasn't been a single archaeological find that falsifies any historical event in the Bible. And you know, that's a fact. So why would I need to prove the Bible innocent? Yeah, why? I don't know, man. Uh, I hear what you're saying. Okay. So if you're not saying, so why would I need extra biblical support for Matthew telling me that Herod slaughtered male children two and under in Bethlehem, which would have been a small number because it wasn't a large population, right? So why would I need extra biblical support for that when Matthew himself is writing as an historian and a biographer? And unless you have evidence to show I shouldn't trust his history, why should I reject it? Yeah. So I why mean, should I, I believe, believe in it? What rounds have you given me to reject the historicity of Matthew? How many rounds? What? What did you say? You you what? Like the what line. evidence have you given me to reject the historicity of Matthew? Right, right. No, he gave me nothing. I'm not gonna. Okay, lie. so now say, shut your pie hole and go kiss the black stone. <laughs> I agree with you, bro. Why would I need to prove that Matthew is reliable? He needs to prove he's not. The burden's on him. And secondly, why are you letting a Muslim get away with attacking the Bible when his prophet said, your Bible is the corrupt word of God? <laughs> Bro, is this circular? No, he did not. Uh, I can't hear you. What? It's the circular. No, he did not. Then I got to like... Get... And but you let him send you on a rabbit trail. Oh, okay. I'm going to go find... Extra biblical support to trust Matthew. Why? What reason have you given you to Matthew? What reason? Okay. They say, well, there is no extra biblical support. Why would I need extra biblical support if Matthew himself is writing in the first century and is an eyewitness? What grounds do you have for me to reject his integrity and honesty in reporting? Simply because you don't accept it? Well, who the hell you are? You're not, I don't care what you think. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so of course, of course. You get out of this, learn how to argue, or learn how not to argue. And then you tell them, but your prophet said that Matthew is true because he said the books of the Christians are the uncorrupt, preserved words of God. So you're saying your prophet didn't know what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you I understand mean, how start, to argue? I've been starting to say that, that those... Like, you got to speak yeah. louder in the mic. I've been starting to like use that kind of approach now. Keep like, using it. Yeah, it's working. I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> but thank you very much for that. Uh... Hey, uh, Spider, why don't you go spin a web and get the lot of here? Foolproof, because we got another arrogant jerk narcissist. Shut the hell up. Not you. I'm talking about this jerk in the comments. But go ahead. Yeah. Thank you so much, bro. Thanks for everything. You got your answer God now. Bless. Yeah. All right, brother. Hopefully, you do not fall for these tricks of Muslims, and Never. you don't need to prove Matthew's historically rival. He needs to prove he's not. He made the assertion. Why should I? Why should I believe, or why should I provide evidence for an assertion made by a Muslim? Matthew's historically rival. He's a first-century historian biographer. Mm -hmm. You need to disprove. Matthew, because you're saying it didn't happen. How do you know it didn't happen? Matthew said it did. He was there. You're not. Right. And by right. the way, I don't care what the Muslims say about you. You're a good man. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you too, man. But I love me more yeah. than you. I, 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 can I just tell you one crazy thing, though? But if you speak louder. Okay, let me get. You, okay, can, you can probably hear me better now, yeah? You can probably what? You probably hear me better now. Now I can hear everybody, yes, but go ahead. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, like a week ago, I was outside yeah. working night. And, bro, I, I don't know what, what happened. I started to pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Amen. And from nowhere, I saw, like, a falling star, bro. That was crazy. Uh -huh. Was it falling? Yeah. No wonder, man, because it says in Luke 10, 18... Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So a falling star, huh?
and at night? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was. I, oh my goodness! I was confused. So a falling star at night, and you're at night, and it says those who engage in evil do so at night, and you're outside at night, and you saw a falling star. What does that say about you? You better get to church and confess because something scary is happening. You believe so? I think so. What are the odds you work at night and people who engage in evil activity do it at night? Ephesians 5, 11 to 17. And on top of that, a falling star. And star is often used as a metaphor for angels. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Man, I think something's going to happen to you, brother. Get to the priest and have him pray quick. Yeah, I have to, man. Oh, I'm telling you, man, you're in trouble, brother. Dangerous. Hurry up. Don't wait. Why are you here? Leave now and go find him. Come on. <laughs> God bless you. Bye, bro. Okay. Poor guy, he believed me. You know that, right? The guy actually started shaking. Like, hey, bro, yeah. Now he's going to he's gonna call all the churches in his area. Which one of you open, man? I need to get there now. Poor guy freaked out. Can I help you? Jan, this year, can I help you? Yes, sir. Uh, how are you, Sam? Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be better, but what's up? Speak a little louder in the mic. Um, so, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, um, I'm from South Africa. So yeah. we have oh, those... you're, from, you're from South Africa. <laughs> but Ahmed Didet used to be South Africa, Durban. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm from South Africa. So we have this so-called organization. It is called World Mission Society Church of oh, yeah. God. They believe in a, the, God, the mother goddess, right? Yes. <laughs> so they are making their case from uh, Revelation and also from Genesis. So from Genesis, I, I think you have done some sessions regarding uh, the image of God. But the one that I could not refute is the one in Revelation. Re uh, Revelation... Chapter 21 and 20. <laughs> you can't refute the fact that heavenly Jerusalem, that's the Jerusalem above, and it's coming down from heaven at the end of the age. You couldn't refute that? No, they are thinking, they are saying that the bride, because somewhere in chapter 19 speaks about the bride. Okay, so the bride is that. heavenly Jerusalem, right? Yes. Okay, so what does that got to do with their cult? So the, they will say you can see that the bride and also the lamb are sort of, they can give you uh, this uh, living water unless you sort of. Okay, let's uh, try this again, mister. What does heavenly Jerusalem, the heavenly city, the heaven above, our mother, coming down to the earth so that heaven will be on earth, have to do with their cult? What connection do they have with that? <clears throat> They're not heavenly Jerusalem, right? On earth? Yeah. So they will quote Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. Yeah, the third time. What does yeah. Galatians 4, 26 that says, the Jerusalem above is our mother, heavenly Jerusalem, got to do with this cult on earth? That's in heaven. It's not on earth. What has it got to do with them? No, the case is that from Genesis, they will say, well, you see that we are made in the image of God, so we have... Okay. Uh, we have God again. The and, again. One more time. Brother, yeah. I'm answering you, but you're not getting it. Okay, what does heavenly Jerusalem, a city that's heavenly, that's our mother, have to do with a cult church on earth that's in heaven and hasn't come down? So I'm answering you, but you're not getting it. Yeah, I think that, can you please explain it again? Okay, brother, the cult that's talking to you, are they in heaven yeah. or on earth? They're on earth. What do you have to do with the heavenly Jerusalem, which is in heaven? Well, they say that they are led by someone who have, who have come with well, this you know, revelation. I'm you to Mecca, right? I don't give a damn what they say. I'm telling yeah. them, what does your Satan got to do with Jerusalem that's in heaven? You're on earth, and this Satan's on earth. That's in heaven. What's the connection? Uh, I don't know, brother. Exactly. Because you let them get away and you're big, 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 big. <laughs> buddy. First say, hey, buddy, that's heavenly Jerusalem, right? Yeah. 
Where are you? Oh, in Korea. Oh, I didn't know Korea is heaven. Yeah. So what the hell does Heavenly Jerusalem got to do with you, Korean cult? Nothing. No. Yeah. But also another thing, what they are saying is they're making case that there's a God, the mother. So what they will say this Where God, the mother. Where does it say Heavenly Jerusalem is a goddess or God? It says it's the city of the living God. It is a city, not a goddess. And that city is our mother. Because like when I say America is my mother, my, my mother country, right? My homeland, my, okay. It's a city, not a person. It's a city. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. You've come to Zion. You have come to Heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. What does a city that's heavenly, that's Jerusalem, got to do with a goddess when this is a city, not a person? You see how easy it I just destroyed them? Yeah. Why you make it confused? Oh, ooh, they scared me. Oh, it's mother. <laughs> oh, does she have a womb? How big is her breast? Does she have black? It says the mother meaning our motherland. The land that we belong to. It's a city, not a person. It's a, he, Galatians 4.26. Jerusalem above is our mother. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. You've come to Zion, you've come to Heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God, Revelation 21, and I saw Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, the city. And then Revelation 21, 9, 14, it tells you the dimension of the city. It has 12 gates, 12 stones that keep it up. How's that? What does that got to do with a goddess figure? Yeah. No, I see that. I see that. Why was it hard for you to refute it, man? Say, hold on. Uh, excuse me, uh, you Korean cult. By the way, I just gave you a link. This brother right here, he, I had him on my channel. I asked, answered questions for them because they're an anti-Trinitarian cult. He left this cult. His name is Brother Chris. This is his YouTube channel. He's now uploading videos to destroy this cult. So, guys, if you want to know about this cult, it's a Korean cult. And here it is. I just sent you the link in private, but here's for the rest of you. Right there. This is it. So you understand how I just destroyed their argument? What does heavenly Jerusalem, which is a city, got to do with your cult and your cult leader that's on earth in Korea? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that is good. Thank you, Sam. So, um, it was easy. And what does God creating man in his image have to do with a female goddess? When the Bible that you read, it says God, God alone, only God created male and female. Where's the goddess? Hmm. Have you not read Genesis 1, 26, 27? I have, I have. Okay, so I was so can you show me there where it says, let us make man our image and God and his wife, the goddess <laughs> created. It said God created man in his own image. God created in his own image. Where did you get the female god there? Yeah, I don't see it, but the, the, the claim was since we have Trinity, so they don't believe in the Trinity. So what Trinity? They, they don't believe in the I Trinity. Think, I think it also like it it um it depends who are you speaking to because some they will say yes we believe in Trinity, but no, some they will say ask them, if you ask him because the gentleman that I interviewed. He was mm -hmm. asking me how to refute their attacks on the Trinity. They're like Joe's witnesses. They don't believe Christ is uncreated God. Mm -hmm. So no, they, you were using a term, but they were deceiving you. So that's why you got to ask them, what do you mean? What do you mean yeah. Trinity? So you believe Father, Son, and Spirit, uncreated, no beginning, have always existed? That's not what they believe. Mm -hmm. So um, where in Genesis 1 do you find the mother goddess involved with the Father in creating humanity? You don't see that. So then that's why I'd say, hey, buddy, I don't care what that cult leader said. I don't care for his interpretation. Who gives a damn what he says? Show me. I'm reading it. I'm waiting. Hello. Where is it? Oh, but you got. No, no, I don't got to do nothing. Show me here. Where? Where is that goddess? Where is she involved in creation? And then you went to Jerusalem, which is a city. 
A city is a person. Hmm. See how easy it is, buddy? Yeah. Why just... do you make things hard for you, man? <laughs> no. yeah. Did you get so, it? Yeah. Now, did you also get the link to this YouTube channel by a brother who was part of the cult? Yes, and yes, I have to do it. All right. So I don't know any other question because that's how you feel. I'll say, what does a heavenly city got to do with your cult? And a heavenly mm -hmm. city is a city. It's not a person. It's not a being. It's a city. Yeah. yeah right? It. Yeah. So another thing, I think you 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 have this session on YouTube regarding the Sabbath. So that one, I think I'm finding. I that know one. that they also, yeah, Sabbatarians, right? Yeah. And, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, you first destroy their lies about the Godhead, and then everything else doesn't matter. Because I don't care what they say about the Sabbath. They don't even have the right God and the right view yeah. of God. So destroy that and that's it. Move on. Yeah, because yeah, last time when I spoke to them, I wanted to sort of to show them their so-called Christ because they have this figure also. They say this person also he's Christ. So I wanted yeah, to... Exactly. He's a I... blasphemous pig. He's an antichrist, yeah. son of Satan. Say, how can he be Christ when the Christ will return the same way he left? Acts 1, 9 to 12 says that he ascended physically from the Mount of Olives, enter a cloud, and that the way he left is the way he'll come. So if he left physically from the Mount of Olives in a cloud, that means a cloud will appear and physically he'll descend from the cloud on the Mount of Olives. Your Korean cult leader, did he come down from a cloud? Hmm. No, he was These born. Are the basics of your faith. You don't know this? Acts 1, 9 to 12? No, I know that one way. Okay, so how can he be the Christ when the Christ said that he's going to come back the way he left? He left physically in a cloud in front of the sight of his disciples, and then he entered heaven. And that means he will come in a cloud and physically descend to the Mount of Olives. So did your Korean cult leader descend on the Mount of Olives out of a cloud? Mm. Huh? Yeah. Thank you, sir. How or no? Yeah, did he did did he did he come down no, from he, a cloud on the Mount of Olives? No. <laughs> so how the hell is he the Christ? Here, Bible, dude. Just know your Bible. Ask the right questions. Hey, hold on, hold on. So your Korean cult leader came down from heaven. So he appeared in a cloud and said, "What do you mean?" Because it says Jesus. Jesus here, Acts one nine to twelve. Here it is, black and white, dude. And after he had said these things. He was lifting, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received them out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, the old two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus who's been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Then verse 12, then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. The way he left is the way he's coming back. He left physically from the Mount of Olives, enter a cloud into heaven. He will then appear in a cloud and physically come out of that cloud onto the Mount of Olives. Did this Korean demon come down from a cloud on the Mount of Olives? No. So why are you, why can't you, it take me two minutes to send them crying to their Satan. <laughs> Just two so, minutes. Yeah. What, yeah. What if if now they say, okay, fine, I hear you, brother. Since we know that Christ also, when he came, he didn't fulfill all the prophecies. You what? Uh, since we know about Jesus Christ, when he came, he didn't fulfill all the prophecies. So which what? That's fulfill. why when he comes, he's going to fulfill it when he comes. Which part yes, are you not uh, getting that he's going to come back? Yes, I, I agree with you. And then no, you're not giving it to me because if you're giving it to me. He's going to come to the Mount of Olives out of a cloud. What has that got to do with your demon? Hmm. See, you're kind of slow, brother. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah no, I mean, yeah, you are. I, I don't say this out of love. I don't mean to. You're so slow, you didn't get it. What has that got to do with your demon? He's going to come and fulfill the rest. But he comes out of a cloud and physically lands on the Mount of Olives. What has that got to do with your demon? Hmm. Yeah, you're kind of slow, brother. You know, you, you're so slow, you make full arm apologetics seem fast. Yeah. So you didn't give me anything because you didn't get the point, Colt.
cult leader. So you give it to me that Jesus didn't fulfill all the promises, the first coming. But which part of he's coming back the way he left? So if he left physically from the Mount I was in a cloud into heaven, he's going to come, appear in a cloud as he comes out of heaven and physically descend the Mount of Olives, and then he's going to fulfill the rest. What has that got to do with your demon? Did your demon come out of a cloud? What are you not getting? See, Jan, you're so slow. Even full armor got it. Yeah. Minutes. No, I, I, I get it. So you're saying, let me just summarize. So you're saying that since we know that Christ, when he comes second time, he will fulfill all the prophecies. Yeah. So it yeah. means that if anyone says that they are Christ, well, they cannot say that because of they have to come up with the cloud. And if they cannot do that, therefore they cannot be Christ. Exactly. Because when Christ because comes... A demon is admitting that Christ at a second coming is going to fulfill because he's claiming to be the Christ who returned, right? Yeah. So the Jack has just admitted that Christ is going to fulfill the rest at the second coming. Mm. But he's claiming he's the second coming of Christ, you see? So he's making my case. When will Christ fulfill all the rest? At his second coming. But you ain't him. You're a bastard, son of Satan. How do I know you're not him? Because my Bible tells me he's going to come back the way he left. Hey, did you leave the Mount of Olives 2,000 years ago? And did you come down to the Mount of Olives? And did people see you come out of a cloud? No? Then return to your vomit. See how easy it is? Yeah. And also the coming of Christ. This is just for me. This is not for that organization. So oh, the coming of Christ, Yeah. For, for the coming of Christ that we see that there's a rapture and also... There's a, no, we don't uh, see that rapture. Um, you're, you're a Protestant evangelical believes that there's a rapture during the tribulation. That's a view that's only 200 years old, and not everyone believes that. So, no, we don't know that. By the way, Vern is a regular, so I don't think she was taking a shot, but go ahead. Yeah, my question was, is it like one event, or is it sort of split into Which part two? Of, we don't accept the rapture that mm -hmm. certain evangelicals believe in, which is a teaching that's only 200 years old, wasn't clear. So what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Jesus comes physically, bodily mm -hmm. to judge the living and the dead. It's all the same event. There is no, oh, I'm going to take up the church and we're going to go to heaven for seven years and all hell breaks loose on earth. That's not a teaching that was believed on and affirmed for most of church history. It's only a teaching that's 200 years old. You got it now? Yeah. So stop these unbiblical man-made traditions that you bought into. Because you're going to an evangelical church that teaches you a seven-year tribulation. Antichrist comes, will make a peace treaty with Israel, break the peace treaty in the midpoint, but he's going to allow them to build the third temple. And then the church will either be raptured before the seven years or the midpoint or at the end. None of that is in scripture. Because also, doctrines, buddy. Sorry. When are you going to change these doctrines that you inherited from men that are not scripture but man-made tradition? They're only two hundred years old. Yeah. No, uh, I'm learning because one of uh, your sessions are happy, uh, helping a lot because regarding this was your sessions are helping a lot because regarding uh, was it Matthew 20, 20, yes. 24, 20, where it's talking about events leading to destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. Yeah. Yeah, not it wasn't speaking about the end times. No. So that really also helped because I was like, therefore, it changes a lot of what I thought I knew. Good. Praise God. Keep changing because you're inheriting a lot of traditions from Protestantism that is unheard of, unknown in the early church. And not all Protestants believe this. This view of the seven year, it's only 20 years old, and it's a certain group of Protestants. Lutherans don't believe this. Episcopalians don't believe this. Presbyterians don't believe this. Reformed Christians don't believe this, right? Mm -hmm. There may be some Reformed Baptists, but they'd be unique. So, yeah, get rid of these teachings that are even not, that are not even mainstream among Protestants, let alone early church history. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have, like, last two questions. Uh, so, this so just people don't, you guys, remember, Janice from South Africa. They're fighting apartheid there. You guys don't matter. He can ask as many questions as you want. Who cares? You guys have been waiting. This man is more important than you. The world revolves around him, not Muhammad. Good. What's your other two questions? 
Um, the last one, we are discussing this in the Bible study, Matthew 6, uh, from verse what? 19. Matthew 6, uh, okay, verse Matthew 19. Six, what about it? Yes. Where it speaks about that uh, the good eye and also the bad eye. Is that I, I wanted to understand what does it really mean? Does it speak about being generous or... What good eye, is, what is good eye, but are you talking about Matthew 6, 22, 23, saying what your eye takes in will pollute mm -hmm. or will <clears throat> pollute your inner person or it will help you to grow. It's what you take in. What your eye, what your eye takes in will affect your inner person, good or bad. What has it got to do with generous? Matthew 6, 22, 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. So I've, I've heard other people that will say something like that. Or no, Jen, there was, there was Jen, some sort of a... Jen, you know what I said, Jody, right? Because you're disrespecting the people. You didn't get it when I told you they've been waiting because it's your world. Are you married? No, no, exactly. not yet. Exactly, you're not married because you're not going to get married this way because you're insensitive about other people. It's all about your questions. Forget Luke and they don't matter. This is why you're not married because your wife will kick your ass and throw you out because it's all about you. You selfish little swine. No disrespect to swine. Can you apologize for the people for taking more time than you should? Because you don't care about yeah. them? Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Sorry. Say, I'm Please sorry that you. I exist. Me? Tell them you're sorry that you exist, that you think you're better than them. Go ahead, brother. Come on. I'm sorry that I, I exist, and okay. I think that will be better than you guys. And now you're going to sing a song to show them you mean it. You ready? Which song? <laughs> You're going to repeat after me. You ready? Sure. Okay. Now, yeah. guys, he's going to show you that he's sorry for hogging up time because you're not important. He is. <laughs> but. <laughs> Three, triple, triple. No, triple, triple. Tony, pretty, wally. <laughs> come on. Come again. Okay, now one more to show them that you really mean it. Pray for India. You love India. Pray for India. India. I love for India. I love you for India. Love you, Jen. Now, next time you can come and take two hours, but have some respect for the rest of the people, brother. Stuck for Allah, stuck for Allah. I know you're in South That's Africa. The Muslims are there. I'm going to have them find you. Okay, brother? Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Thank you, Sam. Good man. Don't you? It's okay, guys. You guys are not important. Remember, it's his world. By the way, if you want to stay single or you end up divorced, make it all about you. Because women don't forget. It's a computer. They put it in here. Chick -chick. Oh, so it's all about him and what he wants to talk about, not me, huh? And then years later, they kick your ass to the curb. Aspirations. Okay, Luke, how can I help you? Hey, Sam. Just wanted to say thanks for, for doing one of these. I haven't been on one of the streams yet, so I'm looking forward to it. I was hesitant to do this because you know why? I'll tell you why. Because then we're going to have people want to ask me 5 million questions, not realize there are other people waiting. And then I have to then chew them out and look like the bad guy. Because other people like you have been waiting for so long. But go ahead. Yeah, so I was baptized as a Lutheran, but my family didn't, like, really push religion too much. So I guess I'd say I've been kind of, like, I guess nominally Christian for quite a few years where I haven't really, like, dug into the scriptures or anything until a lot more recently. So I guess the question I'm asking is, and I think you've touched on a little bit of it so far within the stream, but more in the denominational perspective, like for someone that's really trying to dig in and understand like more so of actually what they believe per se and like what bucket they might fall into is, do you have maybe like a roadmap of a good place to start? Well, start where, what do you mean? Like you're wanting leaving Lutheranism because you want to find the ancient paths? I don't, I don't know what you're asking me to be quite honest. What do you well, mean? not so much as just, like I said, I mean, I, I'm nominally Lutheran in the sense that that's just, you know, how... What are you seeking to do? 
honestly just learn learn more about the different denominations is, is well, there a good... the best the best thing is you look at what did the christians teach for the first 300 years and see which church closely aligns with those teachings so if you look at say okay how did the christians understand water baptism first 300 years how did they understand the eucharist how did they understand salvation could you lose it how did they understand the status of mary how did they understand intercession of saints and once you see what they believe then you look at the church and see which of the modern churches more closely align themselves with these teachings and are more faithful to those teachings and then you decide gotcha that's i guess just pig piggybacking off of that too i kind of know probably what your answer to it is i guess what's your opinion on like the more like resurgence of like non-denominational churches now why would i want to join a modern protestant sect when my concern is to try to find the fullness of the truth and if i believe what the scriptures teach god has been building his church from the time the lord went to heaven by the spirit working through the apostles and he's preserved that church long before the reformation long before non-denominationalism -denom so if i want the fullness of the truth i don't start start there non-denominationalism is a sect within protestantism and it itself is a denomination the no denomination is non-denominationalism gotcha so why um, would I go there when by its very nature it's recent it's 20th century 21st century but the church has been around since the time of christ right yeah so then why would i not want to know who these men were that the apostles appointed by the spirit to then succeed them entrusted with the preservation of scriptures and the church and follow that trajectory and then i will arrive at the conclusion of which of these churches are more faithful and more closely aligned with the ancient traditions it's not yeah. not denominationalism yeah that makes complete logical sense i was just well, curious that's what you do. a bunch of them have been popping up more specifically where i'm at right now so that's what you do brother you don't why would i want to be non-denominational when that's a modern phenomenon 20th 21st century and it is a sect it becomes a dominant denomination a protestantism and protestantism can go no further than the 16th century and even what we find in modern protestantism isn't even faithful to the protestantism of the magisterial reformers like martin luther john calvin zwingli you name it why would i want to start there if I believe Jesus is almighty God and has been preserving his church from the time he went to heaven. So why would I not want to look at what Christians believe in the first century, second century, third century, fourth century? Once I do that, your only choices are, being honest with you, it's Orthodox or Catholic. There's no third choice. Makes sense. I guess shifting gears a little bit, I have looked into um, Islam, not in terms of like conversion or anything like that, but just learning more about it and um i know you you've talked about the issue of aisha, aisha quite extensively aisha. <laughs> um i was listening to a stream from i think it was the muslim lantern why would you listen to him i, I just popped up on my feed to be honest with you and someone was asking. uh well so i've heard pretty much like all the their general apologetics towards like why it was okay but it was the first time i'd ever heard an argument that he was making that because the general life expectancy at that point in time was so far lower than it is now that it made more logical sense for them to marry and conceive earlier i was just curious to do what again that the life expectancy at that time was just so far lower than it is now that it made sense for at least a good understanding as to why they would marry it made and sense for a 54 year old man to marry a nine year old when we left childless at 18 who lived all the way into her 60s hmm, that makes sense yeah 
I was just curious if you'd ever heard that argument before. No, I, I mean, remember. but I would say, so you're telling me it makes sense for a 54 year old man who is old enough to be her great grandfather to marry a nine year old who was previous and premature minor and then leave her a widow at 18 with no children and she cannot ever marry and she lived all the way into her 60s. So that, that's no, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I think I think it's terrible. But. Well, I'm giving you the answer. Did you get my answer to his claim? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then that makes sense, uh, Muslim Phantom? Because Aisha did not have a short life. She lived past her 50s. If my rec recollection doesn't fail me, I believe she was also in her 60s. But we know she was past her 50s. And then on top of that, he was 54 years old. He was old enough to be her great-grandfather. And on top of that, he left her childless and a widow at 18 where she could never marry and have children. Yeah, pretty messed up stuff. So that's my point. And moreover, it's not so much Muhammad marrying a nine-year-old because he's a pedo, but the Quran actually legislates and permits that till this day, even in the 21st century, Grown men can actually marry prepubescent, premature minors who are not physiologically or psychologically mature enough for intimacy. The only condition is if they can handle penetration. So did not Allah know that science would catch up and say that girls who are physiologically and psychologically premature suffer irreparable damage if you marry them off to grown men because you have to wait for a young lady to reach monarchy I meaning not even puberty when her bones are calcified and her hips are fully formed which usually takes place around 16 17 and around that age they're mature enough to understand about intimacy allah didn't know that science was going to catch up to that so then he leaves that in the quran saying hey you know what girls who haven't even menstruated you can marry them have sex with them, divorce them so that they can be married off again. Not realizing the severe psychological, physiological damage it does to them physiologically because their bones haven't calcified, their hips haven't fully formed. And on top of that, psychologically, what it does to them. But I thought Allah is the most merciful. If he's the creator, does he not know the body of women better than anyone else? So why is science having to educate and teach Allah and his messenger that this is bad? Yeah, it definitely goes against him being like um, omniscient then. So then, and yeah. Muhammad is supposed to be a role model for all generations, not just for the 7th century. But conveniently, when Muhammad does something that is abhorrent, disgusting, and perverted, well, he's a man of his times and it was okay. But I thought he's a role model and exemplar for all Muslims in the end of the age. And, yeah, and I think, it's isn't not it, known, isn't it in... Sorry, isn't it in 65 4? Yeah, verse 4. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that argument ain't going to work, buddy. So tell them, move on. That ain't going to work. Yeah. And the fact that a man in the 21st century would even want to defend just that, you see how demonic, how perverted, how wicked they are? These are the cancers on human society. These are the trolls. These are the demons in human form. These are the jihadis that you let come into your country. And once they're uppermost, they will then impose their will on you. Poor West. Bye-bye, West. But it's what happens when you throw Jesus out of your homelands, in your legislation, in your schools. When you say, we don't want the Bible, we don't want Jesus, then what do you do? Then Jesus says, if you don't want me, you don't want my protection. So I rule my hand, and the demons and Satan come in with all these ideologies to be a scourge and a punishment to beat you into repentance and regretting for throwing Jesus out. So hope that answers your question, Luke. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I had. Don't want to pick up any more time. Appreciate you. Thanks, Sam. God bless you, Luke. Take care. Amen. All right. So let's see. Rosari, what's up? Who are you? Rosari, Rosil, what are you? Hey, Sam. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? God bless you, man. I've been learning a lot from you, man. So I just, had a, just had a few questions. Um, I know you did a, a, a live stream on tongues before, because I go to a Pentecostal church. Oh, yeah, and, you do? 
Yeah, and they they you know they're heavily emph- um, emphasizing on tongues. So yeah. I wanted to get an idea of what your perspective was on tongues. Is it a spiritual gift? Well, uh, I I don't see anything in scripture that says that it has ceased. So if you ask me scripturally, I can't show you anywhere in scripture where that gift has stopped. It, it ended in the first century. Okay. What about um. Like, so you believe that when people, like, when it sounds like gibberish, they're actually doing something edifying. Well, you're calling it gibberish. In Acts 2, if you read Acts 2, verses 1, all the way to 15, there were certain people there that thought that the disciples were speaking gibberish as well. Okay. Because they said, these men are drunk. You don't say these men are drunk unless they were speaking in a way that sound like they were drunken men who were slurring, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they thought they were speaking gibberish as well. Okay. Do you, do you speak in tongues? I speak a Syrian, yes. That's a tongue. <laughs> but do you speak in... No, but you just asked me, what is tongues? It means languages. Yes, I speak a Syrian, I speak English. You're speaking in a tongue right now. That's a language. But, but that's what I'm saying. You know, like the tongues that you typically see in church or the tongues that people perhaps... Perhaps... Well, those, those languages they speak because the word tongues is where people get misled. The word tongues means languages. It means mm -hmm. languages. It is... Human languages and a heavenly language. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, he says, If I speak the language or tongue of men and angels, but I have no love, then I'm nothing. So the tongues is where get people get confused. Tongue simply means languages. So, yes, I speak in a tongue. When I speak in language, I'm speaking in a tongue. You're speaking in a tongue. But what about 1 Corinthians 14, 4, when it says he, he speaks in an unknown tongue, edifies okay. himself? Just like here, I'm going to speak in a tongue that's unknown to you. Tell me, explain to me what I just said to you. Rosari, Rabbit Maskedana, Isura Laka Bishmai, Parmi, I don't keep a BU, Lebana Sernanu, Sabat, Iwut Krasiana, again Sernanu, and the Pemriaha, Amut Krasiana, the Ziam Zomish and Jew. Okay, you know that tongue? Yeah, you told me that I'm handsome and that Jesus is coming soon. Had said nothing of that kind. <laughs> yeah, Did you know that tongue or is it unknown to you? Yeah, it's unknown to me. Okay. Um, but then why would that, like, how does that, because Paul said, if you do that, you build yourself up. How does speaking in an unknown no, tongue? No, he's saying, if you speak in an unknown tongue, but you do not interpret and understand, then you're not edifying your mind. It's only your spirit. That's why he says, I'd rather speak five words clearly than 10,000 words in a tongue. But like, how does how, how does speaking un, un, unintelligible tongues? Who said like? it's unintelligible? It's unintelligible because you don't understand it, but the spirit can make him speak Assyrian. Even though, in his own strength, he doesn't know the Assyrian tongue. But how does speak? How could, how does speak in a language that like so? For example, if I speak Assyrian and I don't know how to speak it, but that is a gift from the spirit. How does that build yes. myself up? Brother, are you on drugs? Because Paul says in First yeah. Corinthians fourteen, there are people who are praying in a tongue they don't understand, but they're not edifying their mind or others. So he's admitting they're praying in a tongue they don't understand. Have you read First Corinthians fourteen, or are you pretending you've read it? No, no, I, I understand. I'm saying uh, first Corinthians. So what are you asking me when Paul says, there are people among you who are praying in a foreign language you don't understand. So though it's edifying your spirit, your mind is not being uh, edified because you don't understand. So he's admitting they're praying languages they don't understand. Okay, but that, that's what I'm saying because I'm just, just, I'm, I'm just reading. Let me pull up now. Um, it says the one who speaks in a tongue builds himself up, but the one who prophesies. Yeah, his spirit, but not his mind. Finish okay. it. Uh, yeah, uh, the one who the one who prophesies builds up the church. Yes, um, why prophesying mean you understand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I if know. I pray in an unknown tongue language, I don't know what I'm saying. You don't know what I'm saying. Though my inner person is being edified, my mind isn't. Nor are you being built up. So what Paul is saying is, the gifts are not for selfish use. The gifts are not just for you. Yes, it's for you. But the gifts are also to build your brother or your sister. So how are you going to build them up? And how are you going to build up your mind if you don't understand what you're saying? Okay. Okay. And then the, the second part of my question is really related to this is there are a lot of people that say that like every time it acts where someone says. Like, no, that's this, not true. Yeah. It says when it, I understand that people got saved. But when it says the Holy Spirit fell upon someone. That's not true. I know what you're asking me. Every time they got the Holy Spirit spoken. No, that's not true. Okay. Cool. Okay. The eunuch. Acts 8, 26, 39. Show me where he spoke in tongues. 
Acts 8. Sorry, which one did you say? 29. 26, 26, 29. The eunuch whom Philip baptized. Where did he speak in tongues? Uh, Acts 8. So it's yeah. not there. So you're slow, brother. You, it's not there. You're actually going to go open it up? He didn't speak in tongues, dude. Yeah, I know he didn't speak in tongues, but what Acts is it? Acts 9. When Paul was converted, where does it say when the Spirit came upon him, he spoke in tongues? Okay, let me, sorry, let me pull up your example. You got to open it up? Oh, my goodness. We're going to be yeah. here till 6 in the morning. Sorry, what was the one, the Ethiopian one? You're saying Acts. Acts 20. 8, 26 to 39. Put it your foot in. Yeah, man, I'm going to speak a Syrian again. King Asher, you understood what I said, la? You understood. Now, he can interpret. So, in the Catholic Church, because he understood, he's supposed to interpret. Yeah, but. Okay, but I, Acts I 16, 29 to 34. Yeah. The jailer I, who got yeah. saved, where did he speak in tongues? Because I agree with you, but the rebuttal I've heard from some charismatic. Okay, well, you didn't know. You didn't agree with me. Repeat what my argument was. You you're didn't that, you didn't understand my argument. If I'm understanding, you're saying that there are people that got saved but didn't speak in tongues, and you mentioned yes. the Ethiopian eunuch. So why did they lie tongues. to you and say that every time the Holy Spirit came upon people, they spoke in tongues? That's not true. Because it's because their argument would be that in the passages that you said it. Well, why did they lie to you and say that when that's not true? I just gave you three examples where people were baptized spirit, they didn't speak in tongues. But that they would say when I've read this, it, okay, it say it again. Yeah, say one more time. I can't hear you. What would they say? So it doesn't explicitly oh, say. a little louder. I can't hear you. What would they say? It doesn't explicitly. Yeah. You guys are not getting it. Good night. Maybe someone can interpret what I was saying to you because you were not getting it. Okay, Jed, what's up? Hey, Sam. How you doing? Uh, well, uh, hopefully better than the last guy made me feel. That right, well, sounds good. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to, I like, honestly, you. all your videos. Um, me and my dad have been watching it. We use it for Bible studies. And uh, God bless you. That has good taste. Been, yeah, yeah. Uh, he actually you introduced me to your videos. So, um, yeah, that, that was pretty amazing. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, like I said in the chat, this is my first time here, so I'm pretty nervous. But it's, uh, I've been, uh, I've been starting to read the Bible uh, page by page. Um, um, my, I grew up as a Christian, but I didn't really study the Bible as much, just basically going to church, going Sundays, and just basically learning verses. So now I have a question for Genesis chapter 3. Um, is it okay if I ask a, uh, an if question? Or Genesis 3, what about the question? Go ahead. Um, so what if, the, what if the serpent never existed or didn't come in the... The garden. Let me, let me make a but, phone call. Hold on, hold on. You're asking yeah, me a hypothetical. What if the serpent never existed, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me call. Hold on. I, I have a direct line. So ask the question. Go ahead. What was it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the serpent uh, um, if the serpent didn't exist to tempt um, Eve. What would happen? Eve, what would happen? Well, hold on. yeah, that's basically it. Let me call. I got a direct line to heaven. Hold on. Hold on. Sometimes, you know, it's busy because a lot of people call heaven. No worries. One second. Hello? Shlama alochon. Achtochon? Maitun. Why, why, why? Dachit, Yosef. I'm sorry. You want in English, right? Because I'm speaking it in tongues. Yosef, zamat lamay pamzimach lishanet inglisi. Hoya. Chaliole buchyatan gushmei yaparmiyitun. All right, he said I can speak English. Uh, Joseph, how you doing, buddy? You're okay? Yeah, well, of course you're okay. You're in heaven, man. I'm the one that's not okay. I got to pay taxes, IRS. Yeah, pray for me, please, Joseph. If you're wondering with Joseph, this is uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Yeah, so Joseph, I want to ask you a question. Um, if the serpent wasn't in the garden, would Adam and Eve have sinned? Yeah, because this man is asking me a hypothetical. I don't know how to answer hypothetical. I think he thinks maybe I have omniscience that if there was an alternate world, an alternate universe where there was no serpent, then I would know the outcome. Yosef, so you made this guy laugh so hard, he's laughing in my face. Yosef, okay, all right. Can you stop laughing? Khalila, they can hear you, Nasha. It's not my question, it's this guy's question. Okay, I made an ass out of myself. All right. Yeah, but they'll bye. Sorry. 
Yeah, I got. You just I, make I this it. guy laugh at me so hard they heard him on the other side of heaven. Okay, so how do you want me to answer a question that's hypothetical, brother? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sorry to waste your time. Well, sorry, I, I know I look yeah. stupid. I know I look stupid. No, that, that's me. That's me. That's me. Sorry, no, but sorry. I, mean, I know I look stupid. You're asking me a hypothetical. How am I going to answer right. a hypothetical, brother? Yeah, Stop. sorry, sorry about that. All right, sorry to waste no, your time. Not. You just did that to torture me. It's I know what it is today. Let's torture Sam Knight. I'll, I'll I'll torture myself today. Okay, what's the other? Uh, question? Sorry about that. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'll, yeah, thank you. Any other question? <laughs> uh, no, that was. I love that you. Was, see, uh, that seems. Yeah, just well, Joseph is still laughing, It seems man. weird. Why would I ask Look, that? Joseph like, is still laughing. Happened. Joseph <laughs> is still laughing. You're not listening. They can hear him in Hades. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? Right. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Right. Have a good day. Tell your dad. He's a great man. He's not far from the kingdom. All right. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, guys, can you tell me, am I the only guy who attracts people that will ask me questions that only God knows the answer to? I mean, is it me? Am I, is it my looks? Maybe because I look stupid and weird and I attract people that are weird like me because, you know, they say, you know, attraction, law of attraction. How am I going to answer a hypothetical? Only God would know the answer to that. Yes, Camille, you want to torture me too? Because uh, give me a taste of purgatory. You there? Camille? Hello. Hello. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So, um, how can somebody receive the Holy Spirit? By believing in Jesus Christ. Okay. And what is the water baptism? That's the act in which the Spirit makes you alive and unites you to Jesus Christ. Well, then, believing is not enough to, like... Uh, you mean... What do you think believing think is? That. Believing is just mental assent or believing means trusting in Christ and acting upon his word. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's your answer, right? Mm -hmm. Well, salvation is through only faith. And what then is faith? Can, then faith is uh, believing on Jesus Christ. What that's does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? The demons know that Jesus is a son of God, and yet they're going to hell. So what makes you different from Satan? Mm. Hmm. So what is faith in the eyes of God? Because the demons know Jesus is God. Satan knows he's God, James 2.19. It says, you say God is one. Good. Even the demons know this, and they tremble. They're going to hell. So what makes you different from Satan? So what is faith? What is believing? Can you answer before six in the morning, before it's breakfast time? Well, believing is, well. It's okay. Yeah, it's me, brother. I, I realize some Caminos, something about me, my face, I attract people. That are special. You're special. I'm special. So I want you to know you're special. You and I are special. Law of attraction. I attract special people. Because by mm. the time you answer the question, I'm going to see my grandkids. So okay. answer the question. Because by the time you answer this question, I'll be married. When you answer the second question, I'll see my grandkids. The question so, was, what is okay. faith? So what, is, what is the difference between Satan... And demons, knowing Jesus is God, from you believing and knowing that Jesus is God. Because they know that and they're still going to hell. That's James 2.19. Well, uh, what is faith and belief according to the Bible? I don't have it on top of my head. The answer is, James tells you, faith that will save you is a faith that is working, meaning... It is being faithful 
to act upon God's word. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 7, 21, 23, mm -hmm. not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Do the will of my Father who is in heaven. And then John 14, 23, 24, Jesus says, he who loves me keeps my word. He who does not love me does not keep my word. So the faith that God blesses and honors is the faith that moves you to being faithful to obey the Lord. Yep, like James uh, says. Didn't, just as the didn't. body without the spirit is dead, so too faith without works. Yes, go ahead. Yes, so, and John 6, 6, uh, 40 says, for this you is the will of my Believing, father. right? And the same John in 14, 23 to 24 says, he who does not keep my word does not love me. So I like how you twist John 6, 40. And ignore John 15 and John 14. The same John that tells you that believing in Christ is to keep his word. That's what it means to be believing in him, coming mm -hmm. to him. John 6, 40. So is John 14, 23, 24 in your Bible or doesn't exist in your Bible? Yeah. And Is it in your Bible or doesn't exist? I just want to know. Because even that, he who comes to me, yes. looks to me, and believes in me, I will raise up at the last. I know what you're talking about, John 6, 40. What okay. does it mean to come to him and believe in him? If you actually read it, it's coming and believing in him. And Jesus says, the way you come to me and believe in me is by keeping my word. John 14, 23, 24. Yeah. Have you read that? Yes, I read John. Okay. No, have you read John 14, 23, 24, to, where Jesus tells you what it means to look to him and believe in him? Because these are active, present, active. These are present active tense sure. verbs, meaning an ongoing looking, an ongoing believing. And what does it mean to be believing continually? It's to keep his word. Mm -hmm. Can you open up John 14, 23, 24? Um, because I don't know. Maybe it's not in your Bible because you quoted John 6, 40, but you ignored the rest. And is John 15, 1 to 8 in your Bible where it says, He who is abiding in me and I in him shall bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. So you need to be abiding in him because as you abide in him, you will be fruitful. And it's the fruits that are the grounds by which Jesus will say, you have the faith that justifies you. Yes. So why would you I, just uh, take John 640 out of context? It's. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's okay, brother. I know the Protestantism has gotten to you like it got to me. But uh, well, that's exactly the like Bible uh, says. What is it? I'm not exactly like uh, any. No, like I know. But you've yet. been influenced by Protestant preachers, meaning, mm -hmm. though you're not Protestant, you've heard from them because you're espousing Reformation theology. Well, I believe that there are the fruits of the Spirit, of course. And there what? There are the fruits of the Spirit. Okay, but Jesus said, whoever does the will of my Father shall enter the kingdom of heaven. You ignore that. He said, he who does the will of my Father shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So what if you don't do the will of the Father? You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. End of story. And yeah. the will of the Father is to be believing in the Son. But what does it mean to be believing in the Son? John 14, 23, 24 tells you. To keep his word. Because he says, he who does not love me does not keep my word. So if you don't keep his word, you're not truly believing and trusting. Mm -hmm. So there's your and, answer, brother. John 14, 23, 24, mister. And another like, question. Yes, question. Okay. Uh, Make sure because now I'm on the verge of my honeymoon. So maybe by the time you finish question, my wife will give birth to my first child. But go ahead. Okay. okay. So faith without works is dead. James 2, 26. Mm hmm. Faith without works. Is James dead. two twenty six. Just as the body without the spirit is dead, so too faith without works is dead. Mm. James two twenty six. And I know, because I live in a country where the church we have the Roman Catholic Church churches. Yes. Uh, they like they baptized you as a baby. So you better what? believe it. That's the ancient church. The ancient church did that. Okay, uh, what does it mean, like, uh, to baptize a baby? What does it mean to do what? 
to baptize the baby. It means that when you're baptizing the baby, you're trusting the Spirit will come and make that baby one with Christ in the Spirit. So, in the future, when the baby is grown, he will trust in the Jesus Christ. That's and... what, what you want to train him to do, because your duty as a parent is then to show the child you've been baptized into Christ. Now you have to walk in obedience to Christ or you can be cut off. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. And another one, uh, are the gifts of the Spirit just in the Bible? Or, uh, Bible? or are, the, are they in the in uh, our times also? That's a, that was the previous question. That was as I said. As far as the Bible is concerned, if I go with the Bible, nothing in the Bible says those gifts have ceased and they're not for believers today. So if I go with the Bible, I cannot tell you those gifts have stopped in the first century. So you're telling me they, they stopped? Yes? No, I just said... Oh, hey, by the way, my my wife is now eight months pregnant. So, okay. I just told you, I said, if I go with the Bible, there is nothing in the Bible that says those gifts are no more. Mm -hmm. And you just said, I said the opposite. Okay. I, I didn't understand. Yeah, I know. Come in. It's because you're here to have fun with me, man. I know I'm a clown in your town. You stick around, you know. You know, I'm a prophet and a poet. Now you know it. Okay. So does the Catholic Church uh, have the authority just in the scriptures or also in Catholic the tradition? What? Catholic Church what? Does the Catholic Church have uh, our, like takes authority in just the scriptures and also the... Just in the scriptures. Authority is given by God. Scriptures don't give you authority. Scripture is not a person that says, hey, uh, Camilos, I give you authority. Mm. So if you think the scripture gives you authority, meaning. No. Okay, so they... what do you mean that the Catholic Church, their okay. authority is in this? I don't get the question. Uh, I Okay. Uh, I phrased it uh, differently. No. Yeah, what, yeah, what's the question? Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on. I got to call the emergency. My wife is about to give birth. Hold on, hold on. Hello, hello, hello. Operator? Wait, wait, wait. Ambulance. My, my wife's water broke. Please. Allah All right, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so what is it? So, yeah. What's the question? Um, does the church, Catholic Church, the way, claim the... to a son, and I'm going to call him Camilus. Huh. Uh, does the church uh, make the scriptures the out? the ultimate authority and also the tradition no, the ultimate authority is not the scripture for the orthodox or catholic it is an authority mm -hmm. and the also tradition of the apostles that's not found in scripture that has been passed throughout their successors that too is an infallible authority and then the churches believe the orthodox and the catholic believe they're guided by the spirit to then interpret the scriptures and the tradition, oral tradition. Okay. Uh, because even when you say, do they believe scripture has ultimate authority? It is what they call prima scriptura, meaning it it's definitely the inspired word of God, and it is an authority that you cannot contradict and go against, definitely and it's primary right it has primacy but it's yeah. not the only authority inspired by god mm. and by the way even the to say scripture is authority you have to know what that scripture is the scripture does not tell you what scripture is right yeah i guess so that means how does god make known to us what the scripture is well through the believers Appointed by the Holy Spirit. So even the Bible you're reading, that's a tradition passed down to you. That Bible that you read didn't come down from heaven to you. It's a tradition. Tradition means to pass on and to receive. If you look at the words, both Latin and Greek, it means to pass on and to receive. So the Bible is passed on and it was received. So even the Bible is a tradition. 
And that tradition is something important for you to even know what the Bible is, to then use the Bible, to then criticize people and okay. judge people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? So, yeah. By the way, my, my, my child is about to graduate uh, grammar school. So you have another question? So Because I want to make sure that we finish the questions by the time he finishes college. So what's okay, the other uh, Only one left. Uh, I understand that you can pray with someone. Yes. But like the living, not the dead. So I... So who told you they're dead? Jesus said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not dead. They're alive. So he's lying? Well... Is he lying? He said Abraham, guess, Isaac, and Jacob man. are not dead. They're alive. They all live to God. And then Jesus says, he who believes in me shall never die. So Jesus lying? No. So Mano, you just said someone living and dead. So you're saying they're dead? So Mary is dead? So dead in the flesh. Not dead okay, in the so flesh. it doesn't matter. They can be dead in the flesh and more alive than you and me because that means without the flesh, they don't sin. So who's more alive, you and me, who's dying and sinning or those who don't have flesh, do not sin and don't die anymore? The the ones not sinning thank you so is mary dead or she's more alive than you and me well i guess uh, you can say it's his his uh, i mean she's uh, alive jesus said it not me he said they're not dead abraham isaac luke 20 37 38 but, you know abraham isaac and jacob are not dead they're alive to god calls all live to him john 11 25 26 jesus says, i'm the resurrection life he who believes in me shall never die. Never die. John 8, 50 to 52. He who keeps my word shall never die. John 5, yeah. 24. So yeah. is Mary dead? No. Is Peter dead? No. Okay, so then why are you saying they're dead? Jesus says they're not. They're more alive than you and me. Who's so, dying? You and me are dying, right? Yes. Can they die? Okay, so that means they're alive, but we're the ones dying. And they don't have flesh to make them sin and stumble. But so you got I mean, the wrong very little, little sense, you know. The, what is it? You know, the literal sense. What literal that. sense? Who defines what the literal sense is, you or, or Jesus? Jesus. So Jesus says that life is true life, not this one. Mm. Matthew 18, 8 to 9. He says, when you enter heaven, then you're entering life. So what are you talking about? Jesus tells you what is literal, not so what you. What does, does like spiritism and necromancy mean? That has nothing to do with the communion of saints because spiritism means you go to their graves or you contact the spirit to possess you and speak through you. I have yet to see a priest saying, okay, Mary, come and possess my body and speak through me. Why are you confusing the two? Like... I mean, anyway, my child just graduated from college. Why are you confusing the two? Necromancy, spiritism, is where you either go to the graves, channel the spirit, or ask the spirit to come and enter you and speak through you. Can you show me where a priest says, Mary, please enter my body and speak through me? And then all of a sudden, he's speaking as Mary. Why are you no. confusing the two, brother? Where are you at, man? What world? What color is the sky in your world? Yeah, I guess I, I just. Oh. No. Do you understand the difference between necromancy and spiritism? They are yes. channeling the spirit to enter them and speak through them, right? Yes. And they go to the grave to conjure up the spirit to enter them and speak through them, use their body as a vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what Catholics, Orthodox do? They go, Peter, come and possess me. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. Peter comes and he starts talking. Hey, Camilos, I am Peter. I am the fisherman. How can I help you? Why are you confusing the two? Yes. yes. By the way, my, my son is now in a PhD program at Harvard. Thank really? you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you got your answers, brother? Because the rest of the people, yes, of they're course, on their yes. deathbed. One guy's on life support. When he was here, he was young, full of muscle. Now you put him in life support. He's about to die. So I want to ask this question before he dies. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. It's okay. Camilos, Thank you. because of you, my son is now called Camilos. Camilos, make sure. <laughs> When you get that PhD, acknowledge Camilos because I named you after him. You make me proud, son. All right. Let's go. Let's go. God bless yeah. you, buddy. Come back later.
Okay. I hope Bye. you answered the question now, right? You got it now, right? Yes, I got it. Thank got you. It. Take care. All right. Let's see. Uh, you guys tired? I'm on fried. Let me see. Oh, Zimbalahi. Let me see. Uh, what's up, Thomas? How can I help you? Uh, hello, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, firstly, I want to thank you for inspiring me to go to the gym. Uh, when I saw the size of your arms, it made me go to the gym, and uh, I hope to get arms like you someday. By the way, you know Jim, he's a good friend of mine, Jim. Me and Jim always like to go to buffet together. <laughs> oh, you meant yes. Jim, like work out, because Jim is a name. It's short for James. I'm sorry, I got confused. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I had a recent dialogue with a Muslim about uh, the natures of Jesus. And uh, he kept uh, he kept saying that uh, uh, in in the human Jesus uh, the two natures the divine and the human one could not coexist. And Why? I tried That's telling him. How does what? he know that? Uh, he he, he said he used coexist? common sense. That's what he said. Okay, but your common sense is not everyone's common sense. My common sense differs from you yours. So whose common sense is the right one? Well, God's common sense. Okay, so that's what I would say to him. Say, your common sense is not my common sense. So whose common sense is the right one? And which common sense should we appeal to? So I don't care what you think makes sense. You're not God. You're not a prophet. Your opinion means nothing to me. So that's what I say to him. Okay. Uh, I, I also try to tell him that both natures have, have their own realm of operation. Like okay. the so why you want to explain stuff to, to a Muslim who can't understand any of this? Uh, well, I thought that without explaining, he may think that uh, uh, he won the he argument and maybe. Uh, well, no, he uh, he kept uh, saying that uh, exactly. if Jesus had both natures and his human nature is separately being shown and some stuff like that, uh, he was. Basically, yeah, he doesn't understand. Uh, saying, so why are you wasting your time? He doesn't understand. You're talking to a kid who kisses a black stone, who thinks a pdf -er, woman graping, <clears throat> murderer is a prophet, who thinks his God is the best of deceivers, and you're trying to communicate to him. Why you? Why waste your time? He can't understand this because you explained it. He still didn't get it, right? Still argued with you? Uh, well, I've been arguing with him for almost a month, I think, over various subjects. How far did you get with your argument? Uh, well, uh, he kept saying the same things over and over, and I said uh, we should stop because we're going in circles. He didn't exactly. accept my... Exactly. See? I want to give you a salute. To tip my hat to you. You say you're wasting your time. He's not asking to learn. He doesn't care. To learn, he just wants to ask to argue to get you to doubt. So, why you waste your time? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. The other question is this: is the last question. Um, uh, he messaged me last night while I was sleeping that something about uh, heaven in Islam and how uh, you know you have the huris yeah, in heaven have, for them. Yeah, is going to be one of them. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, His mother uh, he, he, he wow, okay. Uh, he tried yeah, he telling me, uh, I didn't know, I thought uh, every woman will get a man. No, yeah, but like his woman, man. his mother is going to be part of the hoodies that her husband is going to deflower forever. Oh, wow. So, say, is that what uh, you well, want? Your mother? You want your mother in paradise with big boobs and her husband with an eternal erection deflowering her with other hoodies sharing your mother with other hoodies that's your paradise uh well i pressed him on this subject and he said that uh the love for he because he kept saying that he'll have his wife and other women there so because he believes in polygamy he said okay, that he's so god okay. so you're okay that your mother will be shared with other women that your father is going to deflower with an eternal erection? And what if he says yes? Say, so then that means you are garbage can. See, you just proved to me you are a son of Satan, filthy, 
and that your God is Satan, Muhammad is the son of Satan, for someone to say he's okay, what a view that his mother is going to be a part of a group of Huris with huge breasts, so that a man with eternal erection, they flower, you are a sick pervert. And then to wipe your hands with them, don't waste your time. Yeah, uh, uh, I also tried to ask him, he, he told me that uh, Allah wouldn't be in heaven, he would be above the heavens. And I asked him, uh, why do we need all these th distractions in heaven, like women and uh, yeah. uh, vineyards and all this stuff, when the greatest joy would be to yes. be with God? Like, because isn't be God enough? Him. So, yeah, and what's above yeah. heaven? What's above heaven? I thought you have earth and heaven, that's creation. So, what's above heaven? Well, Allah. But what's how can Allah be above anything? Because if he's oh, above yeah, heaven, that, yes. he gives them a location, because, right? Yeah, that implies uh, motion. And not only implies motion, it implies location. He's located above. So if he's above, that means he is localized. He's in a location because he's up there, but he's not in here. So what's above heaven? What location? Uh, heaven you know, the funny thing about... The thing about this, I also told him about a uh, uh, last throne, and he told me that it was like some, I read your uh, article on is uh, Islam and Serb uh, about uh, a last throne, and I uh, I told him that him mounting the throne implies motion, and that yeah. would mean experiencing uh, uh, something yes. new. Like yes, and, and he literally told me that they don't think logically and that logic is no, wrong you know what they're going to tell you it says billa kaif allahu alam we don't know how and we don't question yeah yeah he told me power. that yeah billa kaif allahu alam then that's it brother don't waste your time that's it say okay you're happy with your mother being one of the hoodies so now tell your mother say tell your mother she doesn't need to get breast implants because allah is going to make her breast huge free of charge you know that, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he, he's going to be kind to all of you. You're not going to need Viagra because he's going to make your penises erect and hard for all eternity. No, that's Islam. I'm not kidding. That's what it says. But yeah, so don't yeah, be no, I, I uh, Any other questions with uh, this? Brother? Yes, uh, one more thing. Uh, he's, he then did oh, some wait. research. Yes. But brother, before you move on, I want to know some guys. I love these brothers. Jesus loves us. Have you noticed the last two brothers? They're wonderful. Your brother, you and the other guy, Camilus, you're beautiful. You have very thick accent. I love it. And you speak at such a rate that by the time you finish, I will see my great grandchildren. What is it about tonight's session? Well, go ahead, brother. Yes. So, sorry, sorry. One more question. That's it. Uh, he, he then came back to me with the research and said that at the highest level of heaven, the people there are a, will be able to talk with Allah and stuff like this. And mm. but then I asked him, wouldn't that mean that they can now access the uh, place where Allah is, the timeless, spaceless, That's placeless nice. space? Yeah. And what they say, what do you say? Uh, uh, he couldn't answer that. So, uh, and now so he wants, yeah. So Thomas, that's it. Now, but Thomas, you said you have one question. You didn't ask question. You told me how you stumped him. So, what are you? Uh, uh, did Allah, uh, Allah fry your brain because I got one question, but then you didn't go question. You told me how you stumped him. Because uh, 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 now he keeps he keeps saying that uh, because of uh, Allah's big like aura, he said that that's what the word he used. Aura, right? and, uh, it's it's as yeah. big as his arms. Uh, a question, or his Thomas? groins, because Allah Thomas, has a groin. Thomas, you have a question? I swear I'm going to throw myself off the stairs. What is the question, brother? Okay, what okay. Uh, then that that was it. That's, uh, oh, the you mean you didn't ask me a question. You just told me how you stumped him, though you said it was a question. Uh, but the one with the heaven, I asked. Thomas, the thing Thomas. with the heaven. No, 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 Thomas. You go, okay, one last question. And then set a question. You just told me for the last hour how you stumped him. So where was the question, brother? Why you mislead me? You're becoming uh, good. Now you're using taqiyah. Sorry, I, I guess 
the question was if logic is haram in Islam. Well, no, they will tell you that you cannot use your aqal, your logic, to deny naqal revelation. If there's something that's revealed and you can't understand it, you cannot reject it just because it doesn't make logical sense. You say, Allahu alam, billa kayf. That's it. We okay now? Or because I'm ready, the door is open. I'm about to throw myself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, thanks, thanks again, you. Sam. Uh, thanks to you and Camilus. I now saw my great, great grandchildren. <laughs> I have now a great, great granddaughter. She's two years old. Her name is Camila. My son was Camilus. Her name is Camila. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I'll, I'll also tell my brother to watch your videos. Uh, we are yes. only 16, but I keep telling him 16? to watch the videos. Yes. Ugh, brothers. But bo you and him together, you'll be 32. How are you both 16? Uh, me and my brother? Yeah. Well, are we were together? born at the same time. Yes, twin? twins. Yes, twins. Oh, that's what I'm telling yes. you. We are 16. I don't know if you're a twin. You mean there's another one like you? Uh, yes, but he's oh a little God. more stupid. Oh, I didn't say you're stupid. Do me a favor. If there's another one like you, please make sure the both of you don't call in because if both of you call in, I will not survive the session. Yes, okay, okay. You're a good man. I don't care what your brother said about you. You're a good man. Thank you. God bless you, Sam. Love you, Thomas. Now, by the way, what's his name? Uh, his name is Eric. Eric, what a nice name. Thomas and Eric. I mean, opposite, right? Why don't you call him yeah. Didymus? <laughs> because Thomas was called Didymus. It means the twin. I didn't know if you know that. I did, un I did not know that. Thomas in the Gospel of John is called Didymus. It means the twin. So call him Didymus because he's your twin. Okay, okay. I will do that. But I want to give you I want to give you a puzzle. Okay? This is a parable that yes. not even Allah knows. Okay? Yes. Not even Allah knows the answer to this. You ready? Yes. Two girls from Havana met my friend Susanna. They took a trip to Havana and they bought green colored pajama. When you find the answer, come back to me. Okay? <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you, brother. Take care, brother. God bless you. Thank you, Sam. I love you, Sam. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. Boy, I love these guys. What but what is it today with the accents and taking like four hours to answer a question or to get to the point? Goodness, what happened? Good gracious, what happened? Hey, good morning, Sam. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh thank you for your patience. Uh I promise I just got one question. Well, you have what? I just have one question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so my question is regarding 2 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles 21. Don't tell me I think you already know. Why don't you take it easy? God moved uh, David to number and then Satan. Oh, my goodness. I, I really tried. I, I just, uh, I think I. God I moved more. David to number the fighting or number Israel, 2 Samuel 24 1, but 1 Chronicles 21 1. Satan enticed and cited David to number Israel. Who is it? Yes, I want to know. What did he do wrong? I'm not too sure. Now, did you find this on your own, or did someone bring it up to you? Um, uh, it, there was a pastor, a Bible study. What? He brought it up. A uh, pastor? pastor of Bible. What did he say? Yeah. He mentioned um, Second Samuel, and I saw it. I thought he was giving command to it, so I was it? confused. Uh, why was, did he mention he, something... uh, he, he never got to finish the point, I think. It was like a recorded session. A pastor so mentioned it for what reason, though? He was speaking about like um, the spirit and God speaking to us, and sometimes how it's not God. So I wasn't, I was so confused. I had no idea what the how did the pastor use these two passages to say he didn't get to the second. That's what I'm saying. He didn't get, to, he just got to what the first, then to... I've I found a second because I was I was trying to understand what David did wrong. Okay, so what what did he did he finish the sermon and tell you what he meant or no? No, he didn't finish. It was so when is he going to finish it? Oh, he it, it never happened. He never. He just, he just left it hanging. 
It was a Bible study, so it was like a pre-recorded Bible study. Like time. Is that do a follow-up to it? No, I haven't seen a follow-up. He's not going to do a follow-up. I don't think so. All right. Okay, so what's what's the problem you have with it? So I can know what your problem is. I want to know what David did wrong. Like, uh, if Second Samuel he was given a command, and uh, so you want to know what David did wrong, or you want to know who moved David to number Israel? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm confused. I, I think I think it's both. I think maybe God allowed the devil to, to tempt David. I'm not oh, yeah, sure. Well, you got the answer. So God is the one who allowed Satan to move him. So what do you think was wrong? What was David looking to? What was he trusting in? His own, his own uh, ability, like his own resources. And... Well, you, got, you answered it. So why was it hard? David is showing more trust in the size of Israel and the size of his army and in his resources than God. And that angered God. That's why even Joab says, him, says, why are you doing this, right? Have you read the accounts? He goes, why are you numbering? Yeah, I, I remember. I thought he was... It was uh... I thought Joab was trying to praise uh, him. I didn't no, know no, he was, uh, no, it wasn't praise him. Why, why would you need to do this? Why do you need to number and take a census? Because God was showing that David started trusting in and resting in the size of the nation and the size of his army and all the resources. He started trusting in that as opposed to God. And that's why God exposed his heart. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that makes sense then. Thank you understand you. now the context? Yeah, yeah. He was God was trying to show David that he was trusting himself more than him. That's the whole context where he wants to, because even then you'll see, why are you numbering Israel? God has blessed us, but what's the need to number? Because David is now full of himself, and that now he goes, Look, look at my kingdom, look at my wealth, look at the size of Israel, look at the size of my military. And so that caused him to trust in the size of the people, the number of people, the size of his military and his resources. And he got puffed up and took his eyes off of God because he remembered, he forgot, not remembered, he forgot how God took him from insignificant beginnings when he was nothing and made him great. So it wasn't the number of folks he had, the resources he had, it was the God that he trusted in him that got him to this point. Wow. Yeah, that, that makes sense to me now. See, so, and you answered why one place says God and the other saying, because Satan cannot move without God permitting him, right? Yeah. That's Job chapter 2. In Job 2, verse 1 to 3, Satan comes and wants to test Job, and he lets him do it, and then he comes again to try to test Job again. And God says, you incited me against Job. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking because uh, the pastor, he said something slightly different. And I wasn't sure. Like, I wasn't sure. So did David think he was God speaking to him? I wasn't too clear on that. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that I think that's not true. It wasn't Satan talking to him or God talking to him. That's not what the text says. It says that Satan moved David to do something to show his trust in his Size, the size of the nation, military, and resources. So what was in David's heart? His confidence in the amount of soldiers, the amount of Israelites, and the resources. So Satan moved him to expose where his trust lay. Not in God, but in his numbers. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Thank you. Right? So God is now allowing Satan to move David to expose his heart, that he's trusting in the number of the people, the size of Israel, the population of Israel, his resources, his military. So that now God will have a just basis to punish him. In other words, a discipline, meaning what? Once David starts numbering Israel, see, God says, you see, you took Shelter in, confidence in the number of the people as opposed to me. So that act of having a census to see how large the population was, how many soldiers he had, how many Israelites, that act now manifested because what's in his heart, only God has access to, right? Yeah. 
But when he then exposes what's in his heart by taking a census, now he's guilty in the eyes of people. So God is vindicated in punishing him. You see, he's now oh, trusting okay. in the yeah. number of the population as opposed to me. And so he, you know, repents, understands what he's done wrong, and yeah, gets that out of his heart. Do you see you what God is thing? doing? God yeah, sees that applies to us. Uh... God sees what's in your heart, right? Yeah. But in order for God to vindicate himself in front of us, meaning God doesn't have to. He doesn't have to answer anyone. But to show his character, what God is showing is his character that when I punish someone, know full well they deserve it. So what does the Lord do? He knows what's in your heart. But I don't know what's in your heart. So in order for God to then vindicate himself in punishing you for the evil in your heart, he then will move you by immediate instrumental cause, Satan, to then expose what's in your heart. So now that sin in your heart is now in full view, and it's now unveiled, and everyone can see where your trust is. Now God can say, you see, his trust is not in me. His trust is mm -hmm. in his numbers, and therefore I have to teach him a lesson. Yeah, I think even though sometimes we might not know what's in our heart, and uh, it's a heartbreaker story. I think you see that but, that was the that was the lesson to be learned. Yeah, right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question. I don't know if it did. It it, it does completely. You're a good man. So any other Thank question, you. or we're done? No, that was the only question. All right, brother. God bless you. I hope that answered, and Lord bless you for that question. He was well, man. Everyone else understood the answer, right? God is being vindicated and knowing what's in David's heart. He's getting puffed up and too confident in the size of the population and the numbers of the people and the military and his resources, no longer looking to God as the one who is preserving him in his kingdom, but to his numbers. So that's in his heart. Now God is going to unveil what's in his heart because once he does the census, that is a clear sign. He's trusting in his numbers, and now God will discipline him. Everyone got it? Hope that was clear. I thought it was in something. Let me see what to take, because, man, I am fried, dude. Let me see. We got a guy claiming to be Jibril. All right. You know what, guys? It's two hours, 30 minutes. I know I'm going to break a lot of your hearts. I'm going to break your hearts. Guys, I'm fried. It's 7 in the morning, New York time, Michigan time, Eastern Standard time. This was an impromptu session. Overall, I hope you learn. You were blessed. You enjoyed it, even though it's impromptu. If I made any mistakes, may the Lord Jesus destroy every and all error that I committed. Never repeat those errors. And everything I said that was true is from our God. Everything good is from the Father, Son, and Spirit. May he confirm those truths in us to know, live, love, and walk in those truths of God. And may the Lord Jesus make us doers of his word. Bless our loved ones, my daughters, to be doers of his word, to love the Lord Jesus Christ by perfect obedience and give us strict discipline. The Lord help me to get healthier and use my health to glorify Jesus. Pray for me to have my daughters, see them grow up, to love the Lord Jesus. They love the Lord Jesus. Provide for the ministry. And the Lord bless this young woman in my life. I will see you later. I am fried. It's been two hours, 30 minutes. We had a good crowd. We had about close to 700. May the Lord Jesus increase the numbers for his glory, not my praise of quality people. Love you for the sake of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Christ died. Christ rose again. Christ will return physically and bodily. And because he lives, we will live. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, wash us, our loved ones, my daughters, in your blood, and seal us and fill us with your spirit to love you, Lord Jesus Christ, and never shame you. And Lord, help me. Help me to overcome my vices, to be holy and get healthier and use it for your glory. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Amen. Maranatha. May the Lord Jesus return. Take care, guys. Lord bless you.